Hey, Daniel. Hey, I'm Daniel. Yeah? Ever hear about our sponsor? Um, what? World Series of Board Gaming? Uh, is that a giant convention for board gaming in Las Vegas that has 16 games to compete in and a grand prize of 25,000? Yeah, and it has a Dice Tower West provided gaming library and not an overly competitive atmosphere. Not overly competitive? That sounds like it's for us. If you want tickets for September's 2023 convention, just do the stay and play to play more games and not worry about surprise hotel fees. Or do the quadruple ring event. Just go to this link and use the code SHELFSIDE for 40 bucks off your ticket. Thanks to WSBG for sponsoring this video. And now let's get into it. This is the BGG Top 100. We're going to talk about it, talk about our feelings, talk about why games are popular, see what happens. Hi. Let's actually start at 100. So let's, let's, go, let's go down here. Let's go all the way down to 100. Oh, what a great starting point. Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition. Oh my, does this even belong to be, does this even belong on BG Top 100 anymore? Probably not. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> I just want to point out that if you look at the uh, heaviness rating, TI4 uh, is going to start heavier than TI3, which is just like a lie. Like, this is the size. That's kind of weird. Yeah. But with POK, it's definitely heavier. Really? I found, I th I found three to be absurd, but that's, that might just be me. Like, POK seems pretty graspable to me. Maybe, maybe third edition with the expansions, because I don't remember playing third edition base. I just remember the third edition tech. Like tech alone oh, yeah. is tech just alone so is stupid. ridiculous. Yeah, but and then the, the politics phase. The politics phase is even more crazy than it was in TI four. So it's just like, it's true. Like all PLK does is just give people more random asymmetry, and then like for the actual game mechanics, it doesn't really change that much. Like TI three is still, I would say, more complicated than TI four on that alone. Like it doesn't have like all the crazy asymmetric power, but like. That's not adding that much weight. That's just like every once in a while some guy does something funny. You're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, whatever. Yeah, I'll put a thing on the screen about the TI3 tech because, oh my goodness, that is a... <laughs> just insane. Listen, let me tell you this, right? <laughs> TI3 box, just yeah. look at it. It's yeah. massive. It is literally long. It is a long boy. All right, this is <laughs> it's just crazy. There, there is quite a bit of dead space in the box, though. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to say looking at the box alone, it's like, yeah, this is heavier. <laughs> <laughs> it is... It is physically about the same weight, I would say. I mean, honestly, I think Rising Sun was like 101 or something. So that belongs to be here over it. Oh, Tiger's Euphrates is 101. Look at that. Rising I feel Sun's like Rising Sun's definitely like a top 100 game. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. it went to 107. I remember, I remember it was like at 80 for a longest time. I was like, yeah, I was like, that's a pretty yeah. fair spot for it. But like, damn, 107 now? What happened? Same with like Inish, right? I never played it, but that Actually, seems like a top 100. You know what happens? It's probably just because it's out of print and no one can play it. Just like Tiger's Euphrates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Inish, yeah, I think that's also, that's also a top 100 game yeah. for sure. Like Decrypto? I think that's like top 100. Oh, uh -huh, yeah, same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or oh, let's go down here. I right. like cats. That's well, we're, top we're going past 100 uh, now. Right, okay. okay. <laughs> Dominion, oh, Dominion First Edition, maybe. Yeah, no, nah, that, that does not deserve to be up here. <laughs> Codenames 116. Yeah. That's like a top like 200 or 300, I feel like. All right, let, let's, let's go back. <laughs> back on topic. Uh, okay, well, uh, what the heck is next? Yeah, okay. uh, Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle Earth. What is that? 99. It's basically Descent, second edition, but Lord of the Rings theme. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We should play that. That sounds fun. Yeah, I almost got it, but I was like, this is so similar to second edition, I don't want to buy it, but it seems pretty sick. Oh, yeah. like it's, it's literally just like Descent, like it's, assets, but just flipped to be Lord of the Rings stuff. It's really similar. I think they uh, made some improvements for okay, sure. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll play Descent third edition. It just makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Also, uh, it, it does use an app too, which is nice. I mean, but, that's why we play these things, yeah, right? Yeah, uh -huh. uh, okay, 98, Eldritch Horror. I'm actually not sure if that deserves to be top 100. Uh, I think it has so much love from the expansions. Yeah, like, this is a <laughs> game that's, like, kind of just a total, like, what the hell is even going on, and just they released too much expansions, and now it's just like, all right, at this point, it's like, if it's something you love, like, sure, you love, it's just, like, a fun, dumb game, but, like, I don't think it's doing anything, like, particularly like super profound or anything it just happens to be like oh this is like the best like world traversing pandemic scale level of like eldritch abomination fighting you know when we say pandemic pandemic the board game yeah yeah and it's not really like when you think like lovecraftian games a lot of them just tend to be focused on like you know arkham like a city or i don't know like just a very like isolated maybe not isolated like a localized area whereas like Eldritch Horror is your grand scale epicness yeah, yeah. hasn't really been replicated in anything else yet so I guess it is offering something that not a lot of uh, not a lot of other Lovecrafting games are doing, but novelty I don't think is good enough to put it in top hundred. I feel like this is a game that like okay maybe maybe it's top hundred if you like have like all the expansions, but like and if you're just buying it and playing it, it's like dude, that game it's this is not great. It's a game that needs its expansions. So yeah, I think it works really well because of how streamlined it is. Like everything about the game feels super streamlined. You just pick up and go, right? You just all roll right. the dice, do a thing. It's also uh, the format of rulebooks has me convinced that, like, dude, your your game should just always have. Here's like the how to play, like, just 
it's very generalized, doesn't go into any specifics, and then there's the appendix that like defines all the terms. Like that's just the best way to teach games, if you ask me. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, Wait, how did you only have three plays logged? Did you just not log your plays? And when I tell the points, it's like, yeah, we have you three. Know, it's funny because I'm surprised I see games as owned or played because I don't mark anything on BGG. So this is all from like high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't know this game, Troy's. You ever played nope. it? No. Nope. Yeah. Uh, Raiders of North Sea. All I know is some type of Euro. I think I might have played that in college. Can you okay. click on it real quick? Because I just yeah. I played so many random Euros that like. I didn't see. This. I need to see some pictures. Like, click, click on a picture like the board map or something. Like, I might have played this. I legit don't remember. If there's like a random thing where you have to like set, put a bunch of dudes on a ship to make them cross an island to like farm some monsters, then I probably played this. This, this is what's reminding me. I, I might have played this like once. I don't. Like, okay. It's if it, if so, then another forgettable year to me. Like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like I have played so many euros at college. I'm just like, dude. I I can't even anymore, dude. Oh my god. Dominion intrigue. This is funny because I'm surprised. Uh, where's Dominion on this list? Wow, look at that. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's just it's this just the only best thing. one. Okay, yeah, well, why, why, why do we not own this one? We're a fake board uh, game fan. I don't know. Yeah, this one has the most inter da, 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 most da. intrigue. In, no, well, yeah, <laughs> I'll just say most entertainment. It's like, yeah, obviously, it most entertainment is top 100. Uh, it has the most uh, interaction. That's what it is. Ah, because well. there's torturers, swindlers, and saboteurs. That really sounds like uh, our type of thing. Sounds great. You know, yeah. it deserves to be top 100. Fuck yeah, it. yeah. You know, we never played it. Definitely deserves to be top 100. <laughs> <laughs> Mombasa, uh, I think that's another Euro. So I click on a picture of the board real quick. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't think I played this one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that does not look familiar at all. BSG, 2008. Wow. Okay, nostalgia points for sure. I don't think that, deserves, like, maybe yeah. been in the past. I don't think yeah, nowadays yeah. it's a top 100 game. It used to be like top 15, top 20, I think, at some point. Yeah. Cause like there's just games that just do it better nowadays, right? For example, uh, Unfathomable is just like I think for nowadays is better BSG, and then yeah. it's Human Punch from the, the beginning, which is like, oh, this is like actually an endlessly replayable BSG. It like, doesn't like wear out over like five plays. Like, okay, whoa, whoa, okay. Yeah, I mean that's uh, like Human Punch from the beginning is a whole different level of game, though. Yeah, that game is <laughs> yeah, nuts. It's so, it's so much different in this game. Uh, the thing about BSG is that I think a lot of people play it because of the theme, because there are a lot of diehard Battlestar Alaska <laughs> fans out there. All right, yeah, well, I can't really speak on that, so. Yeah, but, I mean, look at that price. Holy cow. Amazon for one game box, four fifty. How much did you sell for again? I sold four of them for 800 Oh, my God, let's go, dude. That's some sick camera yeah. here. Oh, Cthulhu Death and Die broke yeah. in the top 100? Dude, let's go. Poggers in the chat. Oh, my God, that game's actually sick. Was, for the longest time, it was like 200 and it was, oh, it was like wow. climbing up slowly. And you're like, uh -huh. okay, that is a great game to put up here. Oh, mm, yeah. excellent game. I'm not surprised it's not higher. I would imagine it's because it's just cool when you're not just shenanigans. People just like pretty sketched out about that. Also in this game, it's another one of those games where you probably should get an expansion to fix it. Like base game is fine, but like you basically have like six plays out of it and then you're done, right? Uh, so it has but, like, I mean, Eldritch Horrorisms. But the thing is, like, it just the, those plays are so strong though. Like Eldritch Horror base game is still just like it's like actually just missing stuff, right? Whereas this, it's like you get a full ass experience for you know a few sessions. But remember, how often are people playing picture games past six times? You know, like. Let's be real here. I mean, BSG base game. I don't think you could play it more than like five times. Yeah, yeah, maybe more than four. But who let me die? At least you know, even though like you spend all this money to get a bajillion minis and whatever the hell, and like you play it, you know, I don't know, five or six times for the base game. Uh, the expansions are there. They're oh, like if you want this game to be your thing, you can absolutely make it your thing. You can buy all the expansions, you get like three seasons worth of crap, like extra bosses, extra you know scenarios. Like it's all there. I I feel like if you get everything. I don't God knows how often you can play this game. You could probably play like pretty much endlessly because like once you add in more stuff, there's more mix and match with you, right? Because like mm -hmm. the way the game's set up, you pick a boss and then you pick a level. In base game, there's only two bosses and six levels. So the more expansions, the more crap you you add, the more the combinations you just get out of control. It gets exponentially, you know, multiplicated, right? Because it's like, I'm gonna try this boss, so that's all right. I would like I'm gonna have like seven bosses and like 30 scenarios, right? Yeah, like yeah. that gets nuts yeah. now, you know. 91, Kalis, never played it. Don't know what that is. Beyond the Sun, never played it. Have you played it? No, it's twenty twenty. Yeah, it's twenty twenty. Yep. <laughs> I mean, this is a uh, this game is a Euro. It's all about tech tree. That's that's all I've heard of. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Keyflower, we have played this one. I have played that. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, cool, another Euro to me. I mean, it is okay. Our friend Jason says it's like a little more unique because like it's worker placement, but also drafting, yeah. which just yeah. kind of makes it kind of cool. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I personally just don't care enough. Like I'm playing, I'm just like whatever. I put guys on just guys on boat. I take them. I build some random things around my hexes. I make a make a really long river to get the objective done and win the game. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's, for me, it's one of those Euros that is good enough. Like I'll, I'll play it. it. I have a good time with it, but I'm not like, oh wow, like this is. So such a cool like feeling like I, I kind of get that cool feeling from Gaia Project. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, the, the theme here isn't really that like grand yeah, or anything. Yeah. I mean, the game is like 
I would say actually a very easy like nine out of ten yeah, game. Like well mechanically, made, yeah. it's like this game's actually really clever. Yeah, but like exactly. when I'm playing, it, I'm kind of just like, yeah, there's meatballs and resources. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, cool. It's like, oh, I'm gonna cut him off from getting his river combo. Uh, okay, I'll just take these tiles. Though I will, I will say that I want more Euros to be designed like this because drafting plus worker placement is pretty cool. Not gonna lie, uh, please do that. That is a great, just easy way to throw more interaction without yeah. actually changing too many mechanics around. So, yeah. so that is a game I'm always up to play for sure. But I don't think I'd want to own it. I yeah, I would never want to own it. it. I'd yeah. never recommend it. But if people want to play, it, be like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, you'd recommend it, but not for you to play, right? You recommend it for other I recommend to play. it professionally yeah. amongst <laughs> our friends. If someone yeah. were to say, "Ah, oh, yeah, dude, uh, we're gonna play this," I'm gonna be like, "Now, nah, fuck you. We're playing Root." <laughs> Okay, El Grande. I've never played it. Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't, I don't this doesn't, does not ring a bell. Nope. Okay, okay, okay. Architects of West Kingdom. I think this is a solo game. Never played it. Uh, I mean, I don't, it doesn't ring a bell. All right, this is Haven't played this. Haven't played that. Haven't played that. <laughs> but this one we have played. Look how much this is biased towards the Euros. Yeah. Man, look at that. Yeah, Tainted Grill, The Fall of Avalon. This is a game that I feel like should not be top 100. <laughs> we both played it. You played it a hell of a lot. You beat the game. You have a lot of thoughts on this. <laughs> also, look how much like there's like no plays on it. There's only like ten thousand. Ah. Uh, well, dude, this game is just so much vibe and hype. Like you open well, the here's box. the thing, right? It's not in retail, so that means the only people who've played this are backers. So we're not really getting a complete picture because there's not like randos playing it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, it's also kind of expensive, right? Yeah, this is how you distort the, the system. You make sure your game is just only available, you know, for Kickstarter backers, and then make sure the game is big enough, which this game is, right? You know, first one got like what five million dollars behind it, something nuts like that, right? So like that way, the only people who ever rate it are guys who are already pretty, you know like predisposed to like rate it highly, you know? <laughs> yeah. But King's Ruin, maybe that will be uh, on here at some point. That I would say, like at least from what I've seen of it, okay, that's a yeah. that's a container for top 100. That yeah. definitely, to, to Fall of Avalon, hell no, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so we played the first two scenarios of King's Ruin and he beat Fall of Avalon, I played the first three scenarios, chapters. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next one, Dominant Species. You played it, right? Uh, we played it wrong. I haven't played the, because okay. <laughs> So, like, the our uh, friends played it, like, last week when I was gone playing Frosthaven. Uh, so I wasn't there for that. They apparently played it correctly this time. Uh, the first time we played it, I think we were doing the uh, Ice Age, like, step wrong. We were, like, freezing, like, the land over, like, in out of order, which is, like, messing up the entire flow of the game. So I can't really speak on it, like, accurately. I do think the game is cool as fuck, though. Like, placing down hexes to get stuff and then being like, oh, wait a minute, those things are not permanent because they're going to freeze over later. And we can, like, block each other off from key places so you can, like you know, get frozen in like the worst spots is the funniest thing ever. So I think this game actually is like very clever. So uh, in terms of actually playing a whole game though, of course, I don't know what's going on. I don't actually like fully comprehend the rules because of our mishaps. So this is just really pre preliminary first impressions. I don't know anything about this game. All right, just yeah. do not listen to me. I just thought it was funny. Just things were dying and there was ice ages happening. All right, it's fun year it's, it's like you're a uh, tainted grill. Oh, she's like, is it even a real year? I just, what does it even classify as? Like, I, I, 4X, right? I guess so. I mean, I was just like, I just remember placing a lot of tiles down and just like putting things on them and being like, I oh, just my little like random like creature there. Mm. There's a big, big mammoth, you know. <laughs> so your experience with dominant species, like a lot of people's experience with the uh, Tain Grill Fall of Avalon. They just kind of play. It's like, oh, this is hella cool. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> obviously way exaggerated. Uh, next one, Lords of Waterdeep. Yeah, we played this a lot, man. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. In terms of a top 100 though, mm, I, I, I don't I know about it. that. I see it, but it's going to slowly, slowly drift out because it's a super accessible D&D flavored game. I think people will be like, yeah, this is a cool well, game Two problems. One, it's yeah. set in fourth edition world, which is kind of, actually, okay. is well, it? Uh, do people really care about that? Not really. It's, like, yeah. it's, it's, in a, it's in a spot everyone knows about it. Does, doesn't it take place in like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, water deep. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, yeah. okay, yeah, never mind. Edition stuff doesn't matter. Okay. But what does matter is, uh, you know, the, the expansions, I feel like, is what really makes the game tick. And yeah. base game is just kind of like, okay, this is, this is worker placement, yeah. somewhat autopilot Yeah, whatever. it's super cookie cutter, like, yeah. worker placement. But I can see why people really like it. I think the game... It's a very, very well. like, safe, feels good yeah, game, yeah. 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 Also, I think I found out about this game because Will Wheaton's tabletop. I'm like, dude, that game just looks so good. D&D. &D. So, yeah, D&D. &D. Uh, next one, Seven Wonders. I have played this online. I haven't played it in person. Have you played in prison? I have. Uh, yeah, it's just tableau building and you draft. Okay, yeah. cool. It's, it's, a very, it's an okay draft. I'd rather play Sushi Go, which I don't think is top 100. But Seven Wonders, it feels like uh, it's not quite Sushi enough. Go, I yeah. could actually make an argument for top 100, actually. Okay, yeah. Uh, With the maybe, expansion stuff, right? Maybe not yeah. base Sushi Go, but at least deluxe version, which Sushi I don't think... Party, it's, not, yeah. it's not like Sushi Go plus like expansions. That's just like a better version of base game, you know? And that, I can be like, oh, this is a game that like... You can literally play with like anyone. It's just like such a feels good, just like yeah. harder draft game, you know? And it's faster, it's easier to teach. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, well, Seven Wonders is meant to be like that that game, but for like heavier board games. Right? If it, it'd, be, it'd be like people were like the most heaviest of heavy, and this, this is their light game just to like mess around with, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 82, Voyages Marco Polo. Never played it. Have you? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I just played it. <laughs> okay. 81, Robinson Crusoe. I don't uh, think I played that. Never played it. So this is like a... All I remember is Isaac Childress complaining about this game a lot. Yeah, he used it as two prone quarterbacking, right? Yeah. Well, he used it as a jumping out point in his article about quarterbacking, so... Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, this one, Tio to Tio, uh, how do you not, say this? Definitely not. Never played it. So all the other ones have seem like vaguely familiar. This one's definitely like, nah, for sure, no. Sleeping Gods. Nope. Never played it, but we... Uh, got a friend who got it, yeah. Ah, right, okay. We have gone requests. I saw a comment earlier today. Someone wanted me to review it. I don't know, man. Maybe after ISS Vanguard. Ash is just allergic yeah. to campaign games. <laughs> I'm going in hard with ISS Vanguard, and holy moly, there's a lot to back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, there is a lot, yes. Uh, Agricola, I definitely agree, is top 100. I think this is a pretty good placement for where it is. I mean, if there's anything like Caverna, I'd be like, oh, that's pretty good, I don't care. But it's definitely, I think it's more, it rewards you more for a competitive experience than Caverna. Caverna's more sandboxy. Yeah, it's a lot more tight. There's oh, like, I mean, Caverna is competitive. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, Fields of Arl, never played it. I think the same designer as Agricola. Uh, I'm curious. I'll click on it. Man, might have played it. Who knows? U of A Rosenberg. Yes, it is. Okay. I need, I need to see some pictures. <laughs> I can't, I can't like tell. I Caverna. literally cannot tell. I may have played this. Who knows? Oh my it God. looks like Caverna. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, well, you know, clicking out was yeah, a mistake. Yeah. I, that didn't that didn't like elaborate on anything, illuminate anything for me. <laughs> uh, five tribes. I've played it once. Have you played it? No, we unboxed it and then never got around to actually playing. Right. It. So I played a two player with our buddy that does on this game. It's like Moncala, but this game is so analysis paralysis prone. It is so crazy. Or well, if it's Moncala yeah. with actually more mechanics, of course. Moncala yeah, raises yeah. a game. It's like. Literally, like one move is like okay. I look at these like four like bees, and it goes like da 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 da. Like that's drop, a lot. Drop, 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 yeah. yeah. So this, I play a two player. Imagine playing this like four player with there's way more tokens on the board. I I don't see it. Like, <laughs> I mean, the mechanics are fine. I'm just, dude. How do people play this game without analysis paralysis like crazy? Well, I mean, some people stand but they're just way higher, right? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Grand Austria Hotel never played it. Oh, by the way, five tribes. I think it's this is a pretty good placement for it. I agree. Okay. Grand Austria Hotel never played it. I don't think you played it. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> See, like, I'm realizing that even if I go like, I might have played it. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's like I look at it and be like, I, did, I don't even remember like, anymore. You have like no thoughts on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Brain empty. Yeah. yeah. Does like, no memory found. Uh, turns so, out, like, you know, maybe it just turns out I'm just massively cheating. I just play all these Euro games. I just like don't know what's going on. So I just win off of just like no one paying attention to me. Yeah, yet. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, we're not interacting. So it's like, oh, yeah, like, oh, no one caught me doing this one messed up thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, straight up, like in Gaia Project, right? If you like move a disc like a slight little bit, like, oh, I'm ahead. Just like a, b- a bunch of turns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm fairly sure yeah. I played them right, though. Because like every time I was like doing anything, I'd just ask the owner and be like, it works like this. He's like, okay, yeah. I was like, all right, do that. <laughs> <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully he knows the rules. Uh, Seventh Continent. We unboxed it. Never played it. Uh, I mean, I don't know anything about this game. All I know is that this one is apparently just worse than any grail. So I'm like, what? Okay. Uh, <laughs> but again, that's okay. the opinion of people online and also our friends. So I, I don't know. I haven't played. I don't know anything about it. So I'm just going to go off of uh, the, the crowd and say, yeah, it definitely doesn't deserve to be top 100. Okay. <laughs> 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 this is why I don't know anything about it. <laughs> See, the people yeah. who uh, know the least have the strongest opinions. Clank. Uh, deck building, never played it. I thought the game was fine. Okay. Uh, the issue I have with it is that, like, I think it's just too big for what it is, because it's, like, a very dumb push-your-luck game, but, like, oh, okay. why is there so many mechanics thrown into it? Because, yeah, the game's, uh, you know, got your Dominion deck building. It's just, like, yeah, mostly money, and there's, like, some movement cards, and it's just, like, just very basic rudimentary cards in your deck. What makes it special, though, is that uh, there's, like, these cards that make noise, it's also straight up like clank cards. Those are basically like Dominion curses. So like if you ever draw it, okay. doesn't really do anything. So I have to just make you make noise. And if you make too much noise, you just die. Because uh, like, you know, the dungeon's big and scary. You're attracting the bad attention of the bad guys, uh, right? That's cool. Uh, actually, I won't say you just die. Sorry. Like you get further, more increasing chance of taking massive damage. But at a certain threshold, you will just die though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I imagine the game's not going to knock you out in like the first two turns. It's it's not, yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, I think the game like... By the time I'm like getting the deck building things going on, it's like, dude, I kind of want the game to be over at this point. It's like, what the uh, heck? Like, we're kind of like, what are we doing here? Like, you know? <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh, through the ages, I, 
I don't think you've played it, right? We unboxed it. No, hold on. Well, let me answer your question. Oh, oh, right, right, definitely right. not a top 100 game, 100%. Oh, it is. definitely not top 100. Okay. Does yeah. it look really good? Is that why? I mean, I feel like it's like a great first impression game. You uh, play. Ah, uh, the dead of winterisms, huh? Because, like, you play it, you know, the first couple of times, it's just like, oh. I mean, yeah, it's like pretty fun novel stuff. I mean, I guess it is like a lot of re- replayability comes from like the deck building. I feel like a lot of else just doesn't really matter because like you just kind of can just luck your way into going, going through the good path. Uh, if you don't get screwed on the noise, you just grab the, the massive treasure and then leave. And everyone's like, okay, wow, well, that guy just ran out with like the, the best treasure and got like 30 points out of that. Like, okay. Yeah, 2.2 rating. That's quite low. Now, through the ages, have you played it? Uh, I played a new one, right? Not the. Oh, wait, no, I played Clash of Cultures. Clash of Cultures. Never mind. Okay, I've okay. not played this. <laughs> I played this uh, on Board Game Arena. But it was so ridiculously buggy, I don't even think we were playing correctly. Like, the numbers are all wrong, so whatever. Is it a cool game? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, based on from what I've seen, I think it's definitely top 100, but it's a very specific type of uh, player because it's not really a 4X because there's no board. You're just drafting cards. The game's just all drafting cards. Kanban EV, never played it. No idea what that is. Race for Galaxy. Never I played, played that, uh, and I forget what I was doing. Right, okay. <laughs> I, I played Race and Roll for the Galaxy. Yeah. There was a, those yeah. are both games where I'm like... Basically, half the game I was asking the owner what these icons mean again. Yeah, uh, and okay. then as I played a game, I was just like, oh, okay, cool. I get a big combo and then like just get points. Like, okay, yeah, it's like, like an engine builder, right? Yeah. I played Roll for Galaxy. I like Roll more yeah. for sure. I really like Roll for yeah. Galaxy. Because like when you play like going from Roll to Race, it's like it's the exact same icons. But it's just like, damn, this works so much better on dice because on the cards, I'm just like, all right. It's like it's losing a bit of its soul to me because with the cards, right? Like, sure, it's so random, but... It's like fixed random because you know it's a deck, so you can like count stuff and like with, right with dice. It's so much more like you actually have to react to something, figure out on the fly what's the best like path to build. You, you know? got the awesome cups too. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you think race belongs here? I think both race and roll uh, probably should be top hundred, but I would say like towards the lower ends, I would put like. Actually, I'd probably put them in an even spots because I know people. some people prefer dice and people prefer cards. Yeah, so like, yeah. They probably should both be hovering around, yeah, like lower at, uh, parts of 100. I don't know if roll is on here. It's not. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, board game, uh, board game <laughs> I hate all dice. Uh, I'm yeah, okay yeah. with cards, though, but you know, <laughs> no dice. Eon's End. I've played it once in college. Have you played it? Maybe. Is this, a, this is another uh, one called Deck Builder, right? It's a deck builder you're fighting a fantasy boss. In like a dungeon. That, I'm, getting, I'm getting this mixed up with like another one. I yeah, swear to like you're playing as like these mages. Okay, no, not this one. Yeah. This There's one, like another yeah. one that likes this familiar. What was yeah. I've never seen that like PAX East before. Well, God, what was it called? No, whatever. Just keep going. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I thought this game is cool. Uh, I've only played it once, so I can't say too much. I do think it belongs on this list. Eclipse. Oh, yeah, easy. Top Where's, wait, that's first edition. Oh, I, don't know, I, I don't know. Edition. I don't know shit about that. Yeah, okay, second yeah. edition is way higher. Okay, yeah, second edition is way higher. Okay, that makes sense. Whatever, <laughs> I only played second edition. Yeah. I, I can't talk about first yeah. edition. First edition, I only played it once, 1v1, and it was like, I enjoy it just as much as second edition. I mean, I, but I, I didn't see all the jank and unbalanced stuff, right? But I've only played both Eclipses with uh, the base powers, which is no asymmetry at all. So it's hard for me to really say about balance. Yeah, have you really but, played the yeah. game then? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think Eclipse belongs on here, but you know, over time, this is just going to phase out because second edition exists. I'm surprised it's still that high up considering second edition. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. nuts. I think it's because second edition is just so hard to get. So people, really? Okay. Yeah, so people that have first edition are just like still playing it. I mean, it's a great game. Yeah. Oh, is there, is there like an upgrade kit you can get for it or is it just No, not? it's just totally new stuff. <laughs> no. Anyways, next one, Azul. This one I feel like also is top 100, but probably yeah. not this high up. It's another one I put in the lower parts of 100. It's a very, like, kind of feels good, like, safe Euro. Well, because it's another one of those, like, drafting. Like, it gives me a mm. key flower vibes. Like, yeah, you guys draft. I mean, it's not really worker placement. You still play something. Yeah. You, you, you still draft for combinations of uh, things you place. Which, yeah, they're still very crunchy and very fast. Because, like, if you're playing with, like, I don't know, just like a bunch of people who are very, like, I guess more casual about the hobby or just prefer lighter games. Works for them, but if you want to min max and be a super big, big brained uh, asshole, then uh, yeah, this game's great for that too because you can really think I had a bunch of turns through the uh, drafting. I want to place your uh, what do you call it, fucking porcelain tiles or whatever. I forget the lore of this game, but uh, the theme is really weak to me, but whatever. Yeah, the it's, theme is it weird, work, whatever to me. Game game works great, <laughs> okay. Uh, this reminds me of Splendor. Is that top 100? It's not. Wow. I, that one really should be. That's always going to be a classic. I would rather play Splendor over Azul, actually. Actually, no, never mind. I disagree. Splendor's not really as balanced because uh, it's definitely not balanced. Okay, never mind. It's <laughs> yeah. not, not 100. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd rather play a Splendor over this. <laughs> nah, I think yeah. I'd play this over Splendor. Really? Splendor, yeah. I'm a little too, uh, like, caught in the mode. Like, like, that game is just pure autopilot for me at this point. It's just mm-hmm. like, okay, I, I just don't care anymore. 
Well, I've only played as old once, so we'll have to see. Android Netrunner, I think this would be way higher if it wasn't like just out of print. And it's out of print? Well, yeah, it's out of print. Also, what happened is that like a bunch of core designers, they like hop ship. So, uh, you know, there's suddenly a bunch of other card games as these because these guys yeah, <laughs> like near the end of its cycle, according to our one friend, <laughs> near near the end of its life cycle before it completely died, a bunch of designers hopped ship, hopped ship, and it started going down the drain. Well, that would make yeah. sense. The designers yeah. are guys who make the game good, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, this man, I used to be so into this game. I tried to get like everyone to play it, and eventually, you I can't just, get people to leave you, yo. Though, yeah, eventually, I just gave up because each game is just so hard to teach because it's it's a very it's a highly asymmetrical, not mage dueler, highly asymmetrical dueler, and the game takes like an hour or so, and it's really heavy. It's very stressful. No. Yeah, I'd rather just yeah. play Yu-Gi-Oh and get a game done in like 20 minutes where yeah, like yeah, we yeah. spend like three turns and every turn is like seven minutes long playing like 20 cards, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like my issue with some of these living card games, especially the competitive ones that are so heavy. I'm like, dude, I want to play this game a lot, but I can't because it's just so crazy. Right here, it says 15 plays, so haha. I just like that. Or Mike. Yeah. Yeah, Android Netrunner, I feel like it's always just going to be hard for like 2P games that are like, I don't know, like card games that are like an hour plus long to really stay afloat because like... Yeah. You know, one of the big benefits of like the Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic, you can just break out a quick game and then just be yeah. like, okay, cool, next one, play next guy at the table, haha, instead of being stuck here, be like, oh, I gotta take a bath and break mid-game now, you know? Yeah, so yeah. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic, everyone's willing to sit through the game, then use the bathroom. <laughs> that, that's how you can tell. <laughs> it's not quite, well, it has deck building, so that makes it, you want to put in a lot of reps, which makes it good online, too, which it has a pretty strong following online. That's it's cool, like, all yeah. deck building things online. But at that point, I'll play, just play a digital card game. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think uh, if you're gonna play online, you should play yeah stuff that makes use of it being on, online, like Hearthstone yeah, or Hearthstone, like yeah. Spell Slingers, where yeah. it's like you get these like randomly generated cards. You have cards that like can be like brought out of nothing that don't exist. You know, it's just yeah, like, it's like fantastic animations. There's like a there's like effects that just you story. can't do. Like for example, cards that like I know like Magic has tried to do some real life, where it's like yeah, yeah, you can like combine two cards to like do whatever effect. But like in Hearthstone, right? Like that can just be a thing. Like there's literally like a hero in Hearthstone. Uh, or when I say hero, like there's a hero card. So you can play, it turns your hero into a different hero and then it's hero power becomes you stitch together two monsters and combine all their stats, effects, and mana. And you just, you just pull them out of the, like all the like beasts in the game. It's like, <laughs> what? You, you build a bear cards. It's like nuts. You can't yeah. do that in real life. Yeah, but I, I definitely respect what Android Never is doing and I have a lot of fan, a lot of, a lot of friends that are still- A lot of fans. Things. Yeah, We have a lot of fans. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there, we, have got, we have fans that want us to review this and something, but it's just- yeah. Listen, I 100% <laughs> stand the designers behind Flesh and Blood because they are the guys who can be like, be very intentional about what your game is doing. If there's a reason for it to be played in person, focus on that versus, you know, going online. Like Flesh and Blood, yeah. even the name itself is Flesh. kind of is kind of a play on that. They really want this game to be like the one that's like you play in person, you know? Mm. You're really crafted around looking at each other in the face as you're like chaining cards together, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyways, I think this belongs, to be, this belongs on here. It's just going to be phased out. Rip. Yeah. Paladins of West Kingdom. This isn't there's a another Paladins on here? Paladins I don't know. Architect or something? Paladins the uh, Overwatch uh, clone. Architects of the West Kingdom. And then there's Paladins of the West Kingdom. Great. Never played either. 64 Gallerist. I played it once and I thought it was okay. It's a kind of whatever Euro to me. Uh, <laughs> it's is a Lacerda game and like you're you have like a you have an art museum and then you're buying certain types of art and then you try to get people to go to your museum and then you sell it to them and then that makes you go up in whatever your progression look at that you uh what was jenny barnes called again in uh like eldritch and arkham she had like a really funny title that's like someone who like is like a fake art uh, fan but she's just rich yeah, yeah what was it called know. it started with I, a d it was like a dura or something you know what i'm talking about you know google it right now yeah. type in jenny barnes and see what jenny what barnes eldritch horror yeah uh, no 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 uh, just do mansions of madness the delent it the del Dante. I guess just super into no, dilettante dilettante. Yeah. Just super into like art stuff, but not really fake fan. <laughs> yeah. She's just there to get closer to the Eldritch abominations, you know, uh, <laughs> uh great Western trail, second edition. Uh, I haven't got around to it. Yeah. I have it. It's in the corner over there. I've been kind of balking on doing a review because there's so much to like talk about. There's so many moving pieces. It's kind of point salady. One day, maybe. But I think it deserves to be here. I, I can see why people really like it. What about the yeah. gallerist? The gallerist? Yeah, I can see that too. Yeah, I can see why people like that. Okay. <laughs> when is Proving yeah. hit his phase of like, wait, I've played too many years. It's all the same. What's happening? Because yeah. me and Jason have hit that a long time ago. You know? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, Max vs. Minions. That seems a little high. Yeah, I put that like a low 100. Yeah. It's, definitely, it's definitely a pretty good game deserves to be up here, I feel like, because like, it actually gives you a pretty sick amount of content out of the scenarios, right, and other different like, yeah. heroes you can play in the amazing miniature. Like, also, yeah. It's a great IP, too. Like, I think that alone also shoots it up. Just, you know, yeah. I, don't, I know people go like, oh, fuck the theme, you're all the way. It's like, no, shut up, the theme is cool. Like, why are you, like, you know, like, not caring about, like, putting... Literally tiny little like things from an IP you actually like onto a table. That, that that's cool as fuck. Of course that makes the game better. Like what? Yeah, so Bowser Galactica. Bowser Galactica. Yeah. The reason why this game is so high, I think it's just uh it looks great and is a great price point. I think they were able to price it lower because it is just League of Legends. Yeah, aren't they're they just, selling it at a loss because yeah. they know it just makes like the whole yeah. like uh or the, the board game adventure doing just like look better? Yeah, exactly. It's just super uh Lost leader, just get the IP out there. Look at us, Riot Board Gaming, Riot, Riot Tabletop Games. We what are. What's even happening with that? Because like they released this, and they released uh, the, the like Telstones. <laughs> yeah, and then like what came next? What is happening? I thought, I, I thought they're supposed to come out with something. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see what it is, of course, but uh, hopefully it's. It's like a little too reasons. long. The hype yeah. is dying, man. Let's like, yeah. what's going on. KDM. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I can't speak enough on it because we didn't play deep enough to actually. Yeah. Because I'd imagine some of the stuff is actually really cool. This set the combat seems kind of eh, but like the game is so like thematically oozing, which is cool, fucked up shit, and also literally oozing that like, dude, I can see why this can be a, like a really sick game. But like, I'm not gonna put in the dedication to do that. But for the people who have, I can see this is just, just being like, yeah, this is like literally you're gonna love to shout out this game, you know? Yeah. So this one kind of feels like what you're talking about with, uh, not not this one. It's um, well, what's the Death opposite? May die. Yeah. Oh, or okay. you can just buy it and like that is your game. You can just keep playing it. And also the progression system of. Well, the I mean, village. it would definitely die. I feel like that's a more casual. Like you mm-hmm. can keep playing it. Whereas this, like, yeah, you need to be pretty into it. Like, definitely die. You can still kind of just be like a guy who just has all the expansions. It's like, yeah, it's your game. You play like all the time, but it's also way easier to just you know slap down some tiles, put like some mini zombie. Like, all right, we're gonna throw a bunch of dice and things. You know, mm-hmm. this, this one you need like a room. Yeah, this one you need like a room. There's like a huge box with like a million cards in it. That's like yeah, you yeah. It's one of those games you buy, and then you gotta go like, all right, I need to look into organization. Like, you don't just start playing the game, you know? <laughs> okay, 60, Quacks of Quellenberg. Did you play it with us? Were it was there? the uh, pot game, right? It was like you have tiles in a bag, you're trying to put it down to not explode on your... Uh, I, I like this game a lot. I just wish there was more interaction, yeah. I wish there's... Yeah, I, I wish it was actually shorter if it's gonna have such low interaction. Yep, I yeah. agree. Like yeah. it's just it kind of loses. I feel like this game I would play like maybe two or three more times and I'd be like, all right, I did I the the novelty is lost. Like for an actual yeah. pulling crap out of a bad game, oh Wonderlands War does that uh-huh. in spades. Holy crap. Area control where you attack people by drawing chips out of a bag is the funniest thing to me. And it's just, it's never not gonna get old, okay? So for quacks, I would actually like it a little bit more if the tiles just felt better. I think they feel kind of janky to me. But that obviously it probably has to do with the price point, like 35 bucks, 40 bucks. This is a game that I'm not sure about. I don't know if it's top 100, but I mean, I feel like it's yeah. pretty, pretty damn good for what it is, though. I mean, I guess if you don't want interaction, you just want to draw chips out of a bag. This game's actually like amazing for that, right? Yeah, because uh, I can see it being endlessly replayable because like there's so many yeah. permutations of different uh, chip abilities you can put in the game. Yeah, I mean, I'd be concerned if it was lower than 50, but here it seems fine. Maybe it's more like 70, 80 level. Yeah, okay, fair yeah. enough. Uh, Lahav, have you played it? Who knows? <laughs> 58 Star Wars Imperial Soul. It's like Descent, but Star Wars. I don't think you've played it. Probably not, uh, but that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds pretty fun. Uh, like it was like the Lord of the Rings one down there, yeah, right? Exactly. And there's also like a, there's like a Doom one. <laughs> there's a Fallout one. No, the Fallout one's different. Yeah. I mean, these games sound pretty sick. I'd and play them. You know what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, they're not just, you know, complete flips of uh, the assets from Descent Second Edition, but. Pandemic Legacy, Season Zero. Never played it. We've played nope. Season One, and that is ranked. Actually, uh, Command F Johnny? Pandemic Legacy. I just want to see the order that they're in right now. Okay, so season one is three. Season two is 46. Season zero is 57. And Pandemic at all is not on here. So I swear there was like a... Was there a season three or a season zero to third one? You know, Zero is the third one. Well, then there you go. The list just makes sense. It's literally in order which it came out. And, yeah. you know. and then people are just kind of getting colder on it. Well, not just that, but like also it takes time for things to shoot up, right? Mm. So like I'd imagine like zero goes up, right? Like because number season two used to also be like lower and it's kind of shot up as more people play it, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't play these until they're done with other ones, you know? So until, until more people get to it, it's going to go up. But then as the older ones just get older, they're going to fall down, which is really funny. Like so it'd be really funny to see season zero surpass like season two. That'd be like, that'd be funny. Pretty funny. <laughs> I mean, I'd imagine it's a 
probably better design. I know <laughs> so. It's the third game. Yeah, at least better than season one. Because I know season one, when I went back and read reviews, there were a lot of concerns with it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't really yeah. age well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially after Gloom Moon comes out, it's be like, yeah, this is this is the co-op, like, big game. Ooh. Lisboa, ever played it? Number 56? I don't think I actually would. Maybe, I'm just, the name sounds familiar to I'm just like, what? Like, okay. Let's take a look. It is Lacerda. I don't think you've played it. I don't think I played that yeah. either. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not ringing a bell for me. Clans of Cal Caldonia? Never played it. I, I don't know, man. It's just a little, just, I see a picture of green <laughs> and stuff. Probably clicking on some, you know, some wooden cubes and meeples and shit. Like, I, I just, I just yeah, don't know. Yeah, look at that. Wow, wooden, wooden cubes and meeples. I don't, I mean, I may have played this game. Who knows? I mean, that looks so familiar. It seemed like a gold thing on the corner of a hex and like some like little tokens you put on top of stuff. Like, okay, well, let's, let's go back. <laughs> I mean, if I had to take money, like I had to like put a bet on it and someone goes back my past, I would put money that I played this game, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just don't remember, though. No. Uh, Crocodile? Oh, this game's sick. I love this game. Okay. Holy, this is like, ooh. I mean, pretty pretty inaccessible. You need like pretty, pretty big day table space and a lot of just random gear. But like, man, this is like as clean of a dexterity game as you're going to get. Like, whew. oh my God. I mean, the wax smell is strong, too. Ooh. Is it also a little bit more expensive because you want to get really good wood? Yeah, like that's how I say it's not really the most successful, yeah. but it's the most like clean one. Like you can get anyone to play this game, you know? Look at that, 1876. This is not really a product in the same way of the rest of them, huh? Yeah, I forget. I don't, there's like some historical origin in this. I don't know what it is. I just know that this is like pretty legit, you know? Okay, so do you, 54? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you think it should be higher actually? Yeah, like where's pool? Like both, <laughs> oh, both yeah. pool and crocanoli both need to be up here way higher. Crocanoli, that's how you said it. Okay. I think I'm saying crocanole. <laughs> crocanoli. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. Okay. So that's how I heard it said. So whatever. <laughs> if it's not pronounced that, then we're idiots. So whatever. Maybe you're just right. I don't know. I'm not. My pronunciation is all over the place. How about this? 53 Cascadia? It was an RU to me. Okay. I never played it. <laughs> this is like, okay, you put down the hexes and then the hexes are certain animals. Animals have abilities. They do combos. You get like certain sets of them. You get more points. Okay. <laughs> Power Grid. I've nope, never played yeah. it. Yeah. This is a game I've been meaning to try for a while, but I never wanted to buy it. And it seems like a little too heavy to just go out to a game store and be like, hey, I want to play that one like spur of the moment. It's also very mathy, I think. It's just like adding up like the amount That's of pretty cool. Balance. I'm just wondering why Cascadia is so high up here. I uh, guess maybe the games, I mean, the game, the game seemed really tightly balanced. I guess it's there. I think- That's pretty, pretty hard, big animals on it. There's something with animals and board games because like Isle of Cats, Root, Cascadia, uh, Ark Nova. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> animals are just yeah. like such an introvert thing to like do. Like you're like you're like the uh, weirdos out in nature looking at animals, right? Like fucking. Uh, you, don't, yeah. you don't see Chad's doing that. Like, I see, I see. But I mean, also, I mean, fuck me, man. Animals are great. Like what? <laughs> I mean, I, I like them, but there's like so many of them that just seem really up there in popularity. But his animals. Yeah. How can you not like him when he's like, oh, look at that. I play a bear and I get four points. That's <laughs> yeah, sick. Like, yeah. what? That's fucking, of course I like that. I mean, like, a bear in MTG is like, wow, this is sick. It's like a fighting bear. But I'm just like, a bear in a zoo? Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cascadia's not a zoo. You're like putting stuff down like a nature uh, reserve or something. Uh, it's I like, think Ark Nova's a zoo. Okay. Yeah, yeah Cascadia, the board is like pretty like outdoorsy wildlife, mm. you know? It's, okay. Yeah, like freaking Wingspan, man. <laughs> I mean, we're going to see Wingspan in a bit. I mean, okay, Cascadia's yeah. more interactive than those games. So I guess, you know, you know what? I mean, maybe that's a good or bad thing, but whatever. This game's pretty solid, I guess. Sure, top 100. I don't know where I'd put in top 100, but 50 seems dead average, so fuck it. I guess that's where it belongs. <laughs> okay, yeah, for Cascadia, right? Yeah, yeah. three. Okay, Sulkin, ever played it? Mm, I don't think Black so. Calendar. Yeah, all I heard that is cool, but very analysis paralysis prone. Never played it. 50, The Crew. I played it on Board Game Arena with you. Did you play it anywhere else? No. Nope. Uh, I think the game's like, yeah, it's like whatever trick-taking. In terms of trick-taking, uh, my favorite that I've played so far is, it's called like Skull something. Skull? It's like, okay. It's like some pirate-themed one. Okay. Hmm. Uh, that one I just remember having way more random like cars that do crazier things. This is why I liked it more. The, uh, the crew is definitely um, fun enough. I think the design is pretty good. It, it's like safe, right? It's like a pretty safe... It's good yeah, because like the cars are still like just you know your normal cars. The only thing that's like novel about it is just the interaction how you want everyone else to like. Actually, what was the weird thing? Like everyone had to like, go off each other in some way. Yeah, like, like you're trying to signal, and then you can like have like a once per game signal, or you can signal in other more discreet ways. Yeah, because like beyond that, like the actual cards are so like your straightforward numbers, which is why I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's trick taking. I mean, it's fun gimmicky stuff. If you work together. That's great. If you want. Crazy crap, you want the Skull one. That one's, oh, I wish I remember his full name. Was it just called Skull? Do you, does that even ring a bell? Skull King, that's, Skull King? that's what it is, yeah. Oh, because oh, it's funny, it's playing words. It's like you're Skull King about, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never played this. I've never this heard of it, This game is super actually. funny. Okay. Skull King. 
It's like also every time you play, you can like uh, swap around what cards are actually in a deck. So it's like, yeah, a lot of replayability from it too, based on just what special powers are in there. Yeah, special powers are short games, man. That's kind of like a like a must have. On Mars, never nope. played it. Marak Marak Marakabo Marakabo never uh, played it. Sounds it. familiar, but I don't do whatever. <laughs> Oh, uh, this one's fun. 47. Match the Madness. Second oh, edition. damn. This has dropped. Yeah. It used to be like 20 something. Yeah, I remember being much higher. I mean, uh, maybe it has to do with. I mean, uh, to be fair, like you said, it kind of has the Eldritch problem where it's just like, yeah, you probably should be buying expansions. At that point, you're, you know, selling out like $200. So, like, whew. Yeah, it's also not replayable at all. <laughs> and I have, I have seen people being just like straight allergic to app integration. So, that is also something that's kind of working against it. But I like it a lot for that. Yeah, I feel like that's something that shouldn't really make it go down. That's the type of thing. It's like, that's part of the game, like it or not, right? But like, yeah. also on top of that, Death May Die exists. And a lot of people yeah. want, like, it's a very common criticism I see of, like, people who play stuff like Eldritch and Arkham. They just want to run around and kill things. And if you want that, you play Cthulhu Death May Die. You don't play these games. They're, they're, all, they're all about the mystery and exploring and investigation, right? These games, you fight to get yourself out of a pinch, not trying to fight. Yeah. Death may die. <laughs> you literally kick down the door and you have like a, the, the goddamn Tommy gun. And you're just going like, hey, check it out. Go this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, like, I remember when we first played mansions and we play like one of the bigger scenarios and there's just a feeling of like so much energy, so much life in the game. You're like unraveling all these new things. You're not supposed to fight. And then like when you did fight, it felt really climatic. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's where the game excels. But yeah, if you want to run around and kill things, and death may yeah, die. Death may die. <laughs> death yeah. may in fact die. I think some of my best memories are from mansions, especially oh, yeah. with the same mechanic. It's like the yeah. only like I, I think if you're gonna make a game that really is like you play this once or twice and you're done with it, like just lean into it. Go all the way, stop being this, you know, I don't know, like bashful, like, oh yeah, it's got some replayability. <laughs> it's like, no, just dedicate towards a game that's like you are yeah. meant to play it a few times, and those few times are just yeah. fucking magical. That's what mansions is. Right? Yeah, it's like a detective game. Right, the season one we played, Detective Season One. I really like that game. It's yeah. very simple. What it is, it's a detective game. You play it once. That's it. Anyways, next one. I mean, it's no collective value. Yes, Lois is like, oh, I can't leave this in there because yeah. I'm not, not really going to play it again. Who? I mean, also it's like, oh, there's no minis. <laughs> it's just like super simple. Uh, Forty six, Pandemic Legacy, Season Two. Can't really speak on that. Yeah, yeah but I mean, whatever we said about Pandemic before applies to this. Anachrony, never played it. I just, nah, I don't. I'm just I don't okay. Know. Underwater Cities, never played it. Nope. Oh, this is weird. Agricola. So there's an Agricola twice on here. This makes more sense for Agricola's placement. 43. What was the other one? Was it a second like edition? 63. It says revisited, which I, I don't know how they're doing the system, man. I feel like I was cheating a spot. Well, was that a second? It doesn't change anything? With the, are they just both the Agricola game? Revised edition. Yeah, so it's right second edition. Okay. It's updated in stream, but it's not fundamentally too different. Uh, this is kind of weird, right? So it's like, yeah. like newer components, but the rules are still the same. It's I think they, like, they probably balanced some cards. They probably cleaned up some visuals, but it's the same game. I guess it's like a 1.5. Because, yeah, I know BGG has a system where if something yeah. is re-implemented, it'll just slap it over the current game. So if it is a different game, I guess it's different enough that it warrants that. Huh. Yeah, because it's like... Because like, yeah, I would argue if a game is rebalanced, then yeah, I think it's like... Okay, it's already getting there. It needs something a little bit more. So if they're straight up like, I don't know, different components, different art. Okay, cool. You get a second edition, all right? Yeah, but it's like Pandemic. Like, you don't see it on here. Did that get kicked out because of Pandemic Legacy? Pandemic is like 120 or something, oh, yeah. if I remember correctly. I don't It's probably fall oh. further than that, right? Like, okay. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't... I'm, uh, again, I don't know anything about Gricola. <laughs> I'm just trying to defend if, you know, the differences are there, then yeah, sure, different yeah. game, why not? Okay, but yeah, I definitely agree with it being 43. Could be higher, but again, I think a lot of people are not so sold on the cutthroatness of the game. Actually, wait, yeah. I take that back. Wait, there's so many games that actually do get changed a lot, and for some reason it's just as re-implemented. Like, for example, uh, isn't like Clash of Cultures, Monty Manto Edition, like actually really different from normal Clash of Cultures? Or? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That. Actually, I don't know. Actually, you know what? Don't listen to me. I don't know anything about these games. I don't know anything that what's going on. It just doesn't matter. Listen, this is our uh, rating of the BG Top 100. We don't know anything about these games. We don't know what's going on. We're just kind of going to look at uh, the nice screen and, uh, and words. <laughs> uh, the, um, the crew, 42, Mission Deep Sea. I mean, this is just the crew, right? I'm assuming. Rob I mean, just, it's the crew, but it's in the sea yeah. instead of space. Great, right, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah is, why is that re-implemented? Why is it re-implemented? I mean, let's take another two spots. It's, oh, it's past we are sick. Oh my gosh, Game Destiny deserves to be this high. Holy, oh, I love this game. Okay, I've only played once on uh, Tabletop Simulator. I thought it was fine. Listen, getting yeah. to do, do war in the Middle East while playing as actually European interests, trying to just totally sabotage the different countries and get them to fight while you're just kind of being 
the puppet master man scenes. I love that. It is so funny. All right, more games need to be doing that type of shit. We're just some fucked up guy who's not actually the person fighting and just going in funding people who are fighting. It's so good. I think because <laughs> the way it was printed, it's like this. I think it should be higher, actually. I mean, it has like barely any votes. So yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. Like, oh, I definitely think it should Actually, be Actually, for being this high on 9,000 votes, it's pretty sick. Yeah, it's like a bunch of 10s. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that one Crew, Mission higher. Deep Sea. Oh, man, people will love that game. Love trick-taking. That's their shit. Look at that. Oh, mm. for, Number 40, Blood Rage. Uh, yeah, I agree with I this. I played it once. Yeah. I thought it was, like, pretty good, but I need to play it more to really get a better grasp of the drafting. Like, on eh? first glance, I was like, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good game, but I don't really know too much beyond what's going on yeah. in a deeper level, so I can't really talk too much about it. Hence yeah. why I was not into personal score for it. Yeah, I mean, again, this game is, it's very good at what it is, but it's not a deep game. Like, like you draft the cards. Once you see, like, the draft, like, three or four times, you're like, okay, this is what to expect every game. So is this but, more of yeah. a memorization game at a certain point, then? It's not memorization. It's, there's still interaction with, like, pillaging timing or how to hate draft, but it's not... I mean, like, that's the problem yeah. with a lot of drafting. They just kind of devolve into memorization once you know the uh, deck. That's what I'm saying, right? Because, uh, like, yeah. if you, like, get the cards passed back to you and you see what's gone, it's like, okay, I mean, there's only so many options of what, yeah. who has why, right? Like, like, there are certain draft combos that are just broken and it's, like, really hard to stop. Or you, someone could just, like, luck sack into a good draft. And there is some interaction to counter that. It's not insane, like Rising Sun. Like, Rising Sun self balance is way better. But also, Rising <laughs> Sun is, like, a much heavier game with a more intricate combat system. Yeah, Rising Sun yeah. is just like, yeah. that game is so deceptively, yeah. like this game is so heavy. Holy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But Blood Rage, uh, I totally agree where it is. I do wish I had more repel- replayability in the base game, but I still there's stand There's expansions, by- right? Yeah, exp- I don't think they're the best, the best palance though. No, okay. <laughs> I think oh, it's like, opposite problem yeah. Rising Sun, Rising Sun gets yeah. better with expansions. I, I think it's like that cool mini not problem where they just add in expansions, which are bigger monsters to draft, which are big cool minis. And once you play them, like, oh, wow, that's actually broken. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's funny though. I, I think this is fine where it is. I'd be okay with it being higher. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think what's genius about doing the, that type of system with like, oh, throwing big cool monsters that like, if your combat system is already stress tested enough where like it can handle that, yeah, like that's great. I don't know how it is for Blood Rage, but in Rising Sun, the diplomacy is just so deep that you can throw all sorts of crap and people can kind of mm. self correct it just through you know. Hey, I'm not gonna lie to you, you know, like <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Blood Rage has a lot of tests. Some dudes where you just you just spawn them and they do something. Yeah, I, I do. I do. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Caverna. Yeah, this used to be like. So this is higher than Agricola. Didn't this used to be like six or seven or eight at some point? Was it? I don't know. I, uh, okay. I, I don't know. I don't pay attention to board game geek. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just way more chill Agricola. I mean, does chill. that warrant it being higher than Agricola, do you think? Because you're the Agricola guy. I mean, for me, uh, Caverna, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, this game definitely just be top 100. I don't know where, but you yeah. know, sure. 39. That sounds, that sounds fine to me. <laughs> I think it would be higher than Agricola just because it's just way easier to play and get into. Like, you can just do more crazy stuff. Agricola, you can't do as <laughs> much crazy stuff, but I think it's a much tighter game with more initial interest with the drafting. But, Corona yeah. is the game that makes you really understand the Euro like sentiment of like, all right, this is like the game you play where you sit down, drink some tea, and like eat some snacks, and <laughs> yeah. just sit with your friends and just talk about life. Because like, like, before I yeah. thought this is kind of dumb, but like, okay, I totally get with Caverna because for some reason this game is a perfect game to just have conversations with your friends with while you're playing the game and I, like, not paying attention to each other's like, little farm civilization. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. They're the dwarf farms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have very fond memories of playing this at our friend's floor and it's just like five people playing Caverna and they're just all spread on the floor. Ah, yes, back when we talking. were fucking 18 and didn't have yeah. like back and knee problems. <laughs> uh, I don't know why people had to play on the floor for that long. Like one of our friends played like Eclipse first edition on the floor multiple times. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> Super random question. Yeah. For Blood Rage and Rising Sun, what do you think they should be on the top 100? I feel like Blood Rage and Rising Sun should probably both actually be around like similar areas. So it's kind of weird to me that Rising Sun's like so far below, you know? I think a lot of people. Well, oh, oh, okay. Well, first up, back up. Blood Rage is in stock. Rising Sun is not. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. You know, that's the, that's the whole issue, <laughs> so right? That's, yeah, it feels that's like a big one. It feels yeah. like Blood Rage is like, yeah, yeah like 40. Like, that's fine. Yeah. And Rising Sun was like 70. It's like, that, that would make sense to me, you know? Yeah, but then it's kind of weird because Blood Rage is an older game and it's been on here for so long. It's been yeah. rising. It didn't used to be on here. Blood Rage? Yeah, I remember oh, like wow. back in 2016 or something, I was like, yo, should I buy Blood Rage? It's like $30 on Amazon now. Yeah, like, yeah, you guys yeah. are like, nah, like, what the heck? Yeah, I was yeah. like, and I looked it up PG. I was like, yeah, it's like, okay, it's only like 100, something, like 200, something. I was like, whatever, right? And like, okay. now it's like, wait, why? It went to the top 100. What the fuck happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I remember being like, super being like, Ree, what the, why are you guys tell me not to buy this? Well, this game is great. What? <laughs> yeah. And you know, maybe it was a good decision because right now I'm kind of just like, I'm kind of 
whatever on it. Yeah. Like, I think it's good, but I don't know if I'd want to own it. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the same here. Like, I think it's good. I don't want to own it. So okay, I sold it after the review, but like, it's a cool game. Like, I wouldn't mind owning it. <laughs> but uh, in terms of like not considering logistics and all that stuff, like just player interest, I would say Blood Rage would be. I think where it's at is fine. Yeah, that seems pretty good to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rising Sun, maybe s- high 60s. High 60s. Because I was thinking, yeah, yeah like 70, like yeah. 80s sound like right yeah. to me, but. Uh, maybe 70s, 80s. Yeah. Well, I think Rising Sun has that problem that the first impression can be just awful. And we know how bad it yeah. is for board gamers. And we know how that bad. I mean, it was bad for me. I mean, I still played the game, but I'm like. Oh, I think literally <laughs> like most of my favorite games on top tens are games that I didn't really like at first and then they uh, grew me after like four or five plays. Like Root, Gloomhaven, Siderio Confluence, Sons of Anarchy. Like those are all games that like first few plays I was like, what? And then like by the time it was game three, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, this yeah, game's yeah. sick. Like, wait, okay. I mean, you gotta think about a lot of people, they have the games, they don't get to play them that often. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's rough. But I think Pax Mirror would be a game I enjoy more if I play it. Oh yeah, I'm kind of like, Eh, I like this is fine on it, but I think if I played a lot more, I'd be like, oh, this is really sick. That's again that had a strong first impression. I mean, I think I would still love to play it furthermore, just because like I, when I was playing, it, I thought there was still so much more I can do, and then the theme is just amazing too. It's so unique. There's yeah. how many games are you playing as the guys funding guys who are already going to be fighting on the ground, you know? Yeah. Also, there's car play, which is also cool. Oh, and the yeah, way it too. handles car play with the restrictions, right? Yeah, because like yeah. you have to start like because you can't like be a guy who's backing two different countries. The loyalists are going to be like. <laughs> what is going on, Britain? Why are you funding, you know, like Iran and like, uh, I don't know, what if some are, I forget all the countries uh, in the game. Afghanistan or something? Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny to me. Okay. Uh, now we have. Uh, actually, was it Iran or Persia? I don't actually remember what it was. Because like, I, I mean, It is the same country, fundamentally. Yeah, I just don't yeah. know which time period it was. I, I, I think forget. it's Persia. Yeah. Okay, it was Persia. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I, I, was, I said Iran. It did not sound right. I was Iran. Like, Iran. Iran. Actually, whatever. I'm fucking, I'm white, whatever. <laughs> Too many bones. 38. Yeah, at least in our gloom even Never played, But it's a lot of rolling. Yeah, I, mean, rolling. I, yeah. Feel, I feel like I would like if I played this, but yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I would love gloom even with dice. Puerto Rico, you know, this I actually think is a really good game. I played it once in high school with one of our buddies who is really into just this game. He wasn't like a big board gamer, but he liked this game specifically. He kept saying it was like a, this is like immaculate design. It's it's so good. You keep playing it. And I played it once and I was like, wow, this is really good. And I just forgot about it. <laughs> that's how this for like yours. I'm like, wow, it's yeah. actually really smart. It's so clever. Like, oh, I'm doing these things, and like, yeah, but they are they all are kind of like that. And the themes are dry, so I just don't care. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but I, I would be interested in playing this again. Maybe even owning it. I I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's nostalgia. Thirty six. Oh, this one's been yeah. just shooting up the list. Yeah. This one, yeah. I mean, first it's Marvel. Second, it's a LCG where that is co op or single player. So yeah, that kind of checks off. Uh, I feel like a it's, it's such a millennial thing that's there. It's so funny to me because like, <laughs> I feel like a lot of Zoomers is like. Ah, fucking Marvel. It's like, Marvel. wow, look at that. They make a dumb Marvel. Like, Marvel writing is so just like in the movies. It's like, it's the epitome of like, oh, he's standing right behind me, isn't he? You know, like, it's like just that type of humor. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I never played it, but I can see how people are really into it. It just seems like such a money sink. Like, holy smokes. Isn't that what also Arkham LCG is? And like, just any LCG is just Arkham gonna... Horror LCG is a money sink. Holy Eldritch sucks. Horror, you know, Matches of yeah. Madness, yeah. Cthulhu Death May Die. Those are all pretty money sinking to me. I think this is more money sinky, right? Really? I, I feel like the base games of these, you don't get nearly as much as Eldritch Horror. Because basically, it looks like yeah. it's 60 bucks. How much does one expansion cost? Like 40? You only need like, what, like two expansions, right? Yeah. Or do people just buy all of them? I, I remember know. looking into it and like the base game doesn't have as much content as Arkham Horror LCG, which was like, whoa, ooh, red flags. Oh, okay, yeah. well, but because I, I look at Death with that, I'm like, well, base game's like $100. Uh, Every season like after that's also like $80. It's like, that's that's a money sink. <laughs> I mean, I guess we can justify it more because it has yeah, huge minis, minis, but it also has like a map and like player Yeah, tiles boards. and yeah, yeah this six dice cards. and shit, yeah. yeah. These are just cards. I mean, yeah. it's just the scale of uh, economics or what's it called? The economics of productions. Like when you just yeah. go bigger, just cost less. Marginal uh, utility. I know you're the econ major. What the what's yeah. the fuck is the term? Like when you know, uh, low marginal economies of scale. Yeah, economies of scale. Okay, yeah, low yeah. marginal cost of reproduction. Because yeah, it's yeah. like sure, this is supposed to be cheap. It's only just cars, but like the fact that you have to ship it all out like that, it's just cars, means that like yeah, the actual pieces don't cost so much. But the fact that you even just put it on shelves is like kind of what's making it drive up. Versus like okay, yeah, it's more expensive putting like minis, obviously, but once you get into that scale, it's just like, well, it gets more efficient because, you know, more more of a thing is easier to produce and less of it, right? So Yeah. Also, they have to come up with new scenario designs and then they have to, like, artists. I don't know how much they're paying for the Marvel IV, IP, so yeah. it could be a lot. So, I mean, even though it is just cards, I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Food Chain Magnate. This is a really good game that I don't think I'll ever play in person again. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's like one of those yeah. games I'm like, I think it deserves to be top 100 for sure, but it's also just like, why is this a fucking board game? Holy yeah, shit. like holy story. Like, like it would not fit on this current table because it didn't fit on our past board game table. It's just so big. It's just ridiculous. Like this game takes up like three times which table space is raw saving, which is kind of nuts. Yeah, it, it's nuts. But the design, oh yeah. Like really I would nuts. say this game takes up like as much space as like fucking TI4, you know, it's like- what the Four, hell? I think. <laughs> If I didn't have the actually no, yeah. If you, if you have yeah. four players, yeah, yeah, it takes up more. Yeah, exactly. Which is ridiculous because TF4 is six players. Also, I don't know why I brought Frost That's a terrible comparison. Frost Haven does not take up that much space. Yeah, like, box, right? Yeah, because all you need to set up, like the box is huge. That's just because you don't like you don't use all that at the same time. Mm -hmm. You just like get what you need for the scenario and then put it away. So like in reality, Frost Haven is actually pretty fucking tiny. You can play it like, like, on, like, on like a folding table pretty easily, you know? I mean it's kind of inconvenient because it's nice to have another table or like it's just more table space. So you just lay out all the stuff you're not using. But if you really need to, you know, fucking play in a limited space, you can. You just have to dig through the box really often as you're switching things around, you know? Okay. Uh, but Food Chain Magnate, yeah, the design. Yeah, you're yeah. four player, holy yeah. shit. Because like, the game's supposed to be super interactive, super tight, right? And I love that. But then it's just like, oh my God, in person, I have to get up, go to your side yeah. of the table, <laughs> look at your fucking pyramid scheme of cards, yeah. and be like, all right, I know what's going on now. <laughs> like, whole, and then yeah. everyone has that. Like, yeah, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, and there's like people having their cards on separate chairs because it doesn't fit on the table. And you're like, dude, if I don't see exactly what you have, you're going to outproduce me there. And that cost me like 50 bucks, which is like a ton of money in the game. Yep. So I got to do all those things. And yeah, but great game. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, when we, yeah. Pl when we yeah. played it online, I was like, wait, we played that in like an hour? Holy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because normally you play in real life, it's like, took like fucking like three hours. I'm like, dude, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah, uh, but the, also the theme, dude, the fast food theme, oh, it's awesome. Great, yeah. I wish more games had that. I wish it was a little more colorful though. That's my only gripe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it's, love the theme. It's, it's very, I think it's leaning too hard into that retro art. Oh yeah. yeah. But goddamn, uh, I know there's a lot of board gamers who really like the analog thing of being like, oh, I love setting up cards and shuffling around. And it's like, you know, like I just like to relax, take my time with it. It's like, it's not relaxing at all. <laughs> like I just, I don't understand that at all. I guess maybe when I'm older, I just like to, like to sit down and just like not do anything besides just sleep cards or something. I don't know, but I just don't get it. I'm sorry. Man. I mean, but you can't just sit down and play this game. That's the problem. Maybe if you're like two player. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't, I'm just, I'm surprised that uh, it got this far. I guess, you know, board games just be crazy. It's BGG, you know, it's, it's the heavy, the heavy dudes, they play this game, you know, you it's know, their thing. With the thought process of people that like don't mind the analog, whatever, maybe they just have all gigantic tables and can just have binoculars when they play or whatever. I'm surprised not high. That's why Gloomhaven's high, you know, it's just yeah. goes like, yeah, they, they, they don't put the game away, just like leave everything out, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I'm generally surprised this game is not top 20 or like top 30. This is like 35 right now. Actually, that is kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, why is yeah. it not higher? <laughs> it should be higher. Maybe it's also- It's like, at least in my brain, it should be like around the middle, like, but then it's like, wait, no, actually knowing BGG, yeah, it should yeah. be way higher, yeah. 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 You know, it's just because of that issue. There's some of these guys who just are like, no, I'm not <laughs> playing this, it's too much. Oh, maybe because it's really cutthroat. That could be it. Ah, uh, yeah, that's probably it, man. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, awesome game. Actually, that was a good thing. Yeah, awesome design. Uh, I love undercutting people's sales. <laughs> uh, Barrage. I've never played it. All I know is uh, water is power and it's dystopian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Mage Knight. Oh, dude, we, we played this uh, yeah, in high school. In high school, yeah. I remember you just kind of run around and do quests. It's yeah. fun times. Fun, dumb, fun, dumb shit. No reason to play multiplayer, really. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's cool. It game. felt very yeah. uh, Skyrim the board game esque to me. You know, yeah, what, I, you yeah. know what I mean? Even goofier, right? Yeah. Or like more colorful, I guess. I'm just surprised it's been there for this long. I feel like this is a game that would yeah. not be as like pick up pick upable nowadays. But it's really uh as insane amounts of replayability. And yeah, that map yeah. was huge. There were a lot of decks, yeah, I remember. Was, decks, yeah. pretty, Deck building was really good, right? Mm hmm Okay. Viticulture, never played it. Wait, I have played it. Wait. Wait, is this another Euro? <laughs> I, I would not be surprised if I played it too. I don't. <laughs> Wait, let me look at the map. I'm like, is this the one I played or was it another one that had another one? No, I've not played this one. <laughs> that looks really familiar to me. I played Concordia. That's what it was. It looks so familiar to me. <laughs> uh, Everdell. Yeah, oh, this, wait, this deserves to be yeah, up here. Yeah, easy. Everdell, yeah. Yeah, Great, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think this is a pretty good spot for it. Easy top 30 20 yeah. game. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it just keep going up, honestly. Yeah. Like, this. Solid as hell uh, work replacement. Well, now that it has the big box that's getting delivered, maybe it's already delivered to people. And, I know it's been yeah. like for some reason a controversy. I don't forget what was up with it, but like, really? okay, I don't know. I, that might have slowed it down. I feel like this game was like really going up fast, and it's kind of stalled during the last like Kickstarter for it. So, mm -hmm. mm. okay, again, critters. 
See, I'm telling you, man. The animals. Well, also, the game's art is like, it's not like super like photorealistic, like stuff like, on, maybe not photorealistic, but it's not like realistic, like parks or uh, what was it called? Uh, like uh, Cascadia? Yeah. Like this is just like fantasy root looking ass yeah, motherfuckers, yeah, yeah. you know? It looks it's more like, like root, yeah. I actually like the art more than roots. Uh, ah. Yeah. I think I, I like them around similar levels. Mm. Uh, 30 Orleans? Never played it. I, I Probably not. I don't know. This does not ring a bell, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Lost Ruins of Arnak. Ah, I feel like Everdell should be higher than this, honestly. Lost Ruins? Yeah. I think or it e does e what it's doing. No, I'm oh, just sorry. Everdell should be higher than Lost uh, Ruins. Because, uh, like, okay. not only is there more content later on if you want it, as, like, a way crazier, you know, like, table presence because of the tree. And I think it does the deck building, like, so clear. Or not okay. deck building, tableau building, so clean. Oh, I don't clean. think a tree is that big of a factor, but I, I, I think... No, it's it a huge, more, I think it's a lot more replayability, which is, is a big, big sell. Yeah, Everdell, yeah. like, even just basing it, you play it uh, so much. It is nuts how many permutations of, like, game steps you can have just because how the, the card dealing works in a game. Like, holy crap. But deck building, man. People like their deck building. That is true. Yeah, yeah. Lost Ruins Arnak. I mean, Lost Ruins Arnak. Everdell yeah. also being the thing that, like, people get overwhelmed by and just go, like, I, yeah, what? Yeah. I, okay, I'm not playing this. Yeah, know. my first game, I was really overwhelmed. Also, it doesn't help that the symbols on the bottom of each card are tiny. Maybe it's because the light was really dim in that place. Probably, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Tiny things on board games is like kind yeah. of a normal. Actually, did I tell you in Frosthaven, they made all the sandies like bigger. So oh, like, my goodness. Like, yeah. The numbers actually like, you can see them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is I a, think we're starting to move away from uh, small pieces nowadays. Thank goodness. I think uh, board games are finally, board gamers are finally getting to the point where their eyes are getting bad from aging. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, 28, Root. Ah. That makes sense to me, yeah. I, I, think, I think this place would make sense. Definitely yeah. like it's just somewhere in yeah. the 20s, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Arkham so, a card game. I don't know what's going on there. Well, I mean, if, you, you tell me. If, if this is twenty eight, then I think Rising Sun should be like you know seventy. Yeah, right. Which is yeah. what I was saying. Like, what the? Yeah. Well, Root also for the longest time had weird you know availability issues. It's not as bad nowadays because yeah. Leader Games has their own website. You can just go there and buy stuff. I remember yeah. back when we made a Root review. Even on the review, I was saying like, in the cons, I was like, this game is kind of wacky to acquire. Mm. But I mean, now that's like not a thing anymore. So thank God. Yeah, I mean, it's been four years. Yeah. Yeah, Leader Games. Years, this yeah. is their cash cow. I mean, yeah, yeah this is. Gotten them big, and now they can just have it, which is great. <laughs> Arkham Horror, the card game. Yeah, this makes sense. Where would you yeah. put Lord of the Rings, the card game? Hmm. I would put it... I mean, I don't know how it stacks up against Marvel, the card game. That's the problem. <laughs> Marvel Champions. But Lord of the Rings, uh, I think it's baseball was actually more fun than Arkham Horror, the card game. Once you figure out you had to two-head the first... The, the last scenario of the base game. And yeah. is this through mechanics or just because of IP? <laughs> Mechanically, it's a lot more dense than the card game. Like you're like handling a bunch of dudes, whereas in Arkham Horror, the card game, you're just handling one investigator. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, Arkham Horror, the hard game, is better at like storytelling because you have like character weaknesses, and then you could flip like curses for yourself. So that's pretty classic fun. Lovecraft. Yeah, 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 classic stuff. Yeah, always good to play. Yeah. That. So I, I can see why people like have Arkham Horror, the card game, and stick with it because every snare is like a new Lovecraftian adventure. I also imagine that you know people are addicted to their uh, Lovecraft expansions, and I'm assuming this does that better than uh, Lord of the Rings. Just like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like yeah. name two things that don't go as or sorry, name two things like how do I phrase this? <laughs> <laughs> There's no better combo than these two things, right? Lovecraft board game and expansions. Uh. Right? You look at your Deathly <laughs> Die, your Mansions of Madness, your Eldritch Horror, your Arkham Horror the card game, your Arkham Horror just third edition or Arkham, yeah, Arkham yeah, Horror yeah, board final game. hour. Yeah. It's, May I add one more on to that? Uh, yeah. Solo possibility. I think that's a big what, one. What is that? Like you can play a solo. Oh, I yeah. thought you were still saying games. I was uh, like, what, what game is solo uh, plausibility? I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, like you can play Eldritch solo. You can play Arkham Horror the card game solo. You can play you can play Death May Die Solo, yeah. Yeah, play Mansion Solo, probably not that great. You play Death May Die Solo. Really? I feel yeah. like Mansion Solo is actually still pretty fun. If you just care about the mystery, you're not really caring about like bouncing ideas off your friends. Like, If I were to stick with a system, it would be Arkham Horror the card game, because I can't see the appeal of seeing different horrors as you buy new expansions, and then... Uh, Man, that's just yeah, such a yeah. fun feeling. You'd be like, oh, I can buy Yoxathoth. I can yeah. buy, like, I don't know, like, uh, who's the other guy? <laughs> like, Yig or something. Yeah, Yig like, or... Uh, uh, the Man in Yellow, right? Or something? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's been so long since Lord of the Rings card game. Let's move on. Eclipse Second Edition, 26. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. here's a good, yeah. here's a good spot. Yeah, I think this belongs here. It's like for yeah. the guys who like play TIF and go like, what the fuck? This is a shit show. I want something actually more like, I don't know, like focused on like the combat and like building your shit. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, and It's yeah. like, that's what yeah. Eclipse is, you know? Like less of the politi polit uh, political like nonsense, more of the ships just go bang, bang, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you really got to be into the ship uh, customization. Yeah. yeah. 
Like if you just want TI4, but like less politics is more battles, like yeah. that is Eclipse. That, that's literally that's just it, you know? Also, maybe if you play like four players a lot, right? Uh, that too, yeah. yeah. And player count's better for that too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of people play TI4 with four or five people, right? Yeah. Like apparently- I mean, like, I, I would rather play TI4 with four people over Eclipse, but that's just my taste. Yeah. How many players does Eclipse go up to? Just still I six? Think six, yeah. Oh my God, that sounds hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, definitely belongs there. Uh, another clank. Uh, this one seems really high. I don't know which clank I. Oh no, I definitely played the other clank. Uh, I, did, clank I did not. Legacy, I did yeah. not play clank legacy. Yeah. It's clank legacy. Yeah. yeah. I could see it being better actually, because like mm. that would give it a reason for all these random mechanics just existing in the game. Yeah, and some of that get deleted or kind of altered as you play. Yeah. Because yeah, I'd imagine like you make a bunch of noise in one room, and then the room gets like a monster, in it, and then the monster like destroys the fucking room or something, and like that'd be pretty funny to <laughs> like, play through yeah. in the like next game, you know? Okay, rip up cards, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wingspan. Ooh, I'm telling you, man. The this one, this one yeah. definitely deserves to be up here, too. This yeah. is like just such a... Like, when it comes to, like, the pinnacle of solitary Euro games, I'm like, dude, Wingspan is, like, the best game at that. Like, just straight up, it is so fucking good at that. I'm actually surprised not higher. Yeah, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, it only has 7,000 ratings. What the fuck? 70,000. I'm high. Yeah, 70,000. <laughs> Wait, Clank only has 6,000. Yeah, Clank what only has 6,000, yeah. How is it that... Wait, we gotta play yeah. Clank. That's nuts. Everyone loves that game. What? Look, oh, everyone, yeah, yeah. What? But, no, but this could be like legacy gamer, like legacy gamer, like bias, right? Like if you play a legacy game, you're probably like Clank already. Yeah, fair so enough. So you're yeah. playing a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that's a good catch. I mean, Eclipse only has 8,000, which makes sense. 8,500. 8, I, I, I just see the one there. I saw, uh. <laughs> it's at 7,012. I was like, what the? F- uh, Terramiska. Uh, yeah. Some I've not played never this. played it. I'm, I'm yeah. fairly certain I've never played this, like despite I just I played so many Euros. It's like somehow I dodged this one. I remember yeah. people had it. This one, this this name I actually remember for once. You know? If I had to guess, this seems correct where it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, right. Face Rodin sounds familiar to me too. Okay. But, it's uh, another UV Rosenberg. So the guy who made Caverna type of game. It's very chill. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played it. Like Feast for Odin and Concordia, these games both like are ring bells for me, but I don't quite remember. I have played Concordia once. I guess we'll move on from Feast of Odin. Okay. I've played Concordia once in college. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, Top 20 though? Uh, or is this just BGG just being funny? I don't know. I've only played it. Dude, it was so weird. I played with a new group. We spent forever explaining the rules and then I played it. Like, that doesn't oh, count. Cool, I won. Yeah, your your yeah. penis out invalidated. You know, yeah, yeah. We're, not, we're not doing that. Uh-uh. Yeah. So who knows? But I would, I would play it again. I'd be okay with playing it again. Brass Lancashire. Never played it. I feel like I'd be in the camp of people who would like that more than Birmingham. Which is, from what I've heard about this game, it seems like just more like nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. More punishing too, which is you know fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. I don't know, like Birmingham feels a little too like it, it, I. I'm just not a fan of like, oh, wait, my hand has like eight cards in it and like probably only like two or three of those cards are reasonable to play at this time. So like it, to me, at least it feels kind of like it's playing itself. But that's when I can kind of just pinpoint like I need to put this thing there like pretty quick. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. Let's do that. All right. Go the rails. All right. I got to fuck a lot of points. Okay, cool. I need beer. Okay. I'll put a bunch of beer. All right. That's easy flip. All right, cool. You know, like, <laughs> okay. I guess we'll get to that when we get to that. But yeah. Uh, so- I need to try Lincoln Triton for, yeah. for sure. Because, you know, Birmingham did feel very cool. I mean, 100%. I love it's uh, what what it's going for, you know. Hey, seven, seven wonders, wonders do. I haven't played. I played seven wonders. Just not seven wonders do. You know. I did it once on BGA. I thought it was fine. I think I'd actually funny enough play this over seven wonders just because it's it's kind of the same feeling in a shorter package. <laughs> I mean, also I would just be like, why am I not playing Yu Gi Oh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Magic, or the My Little Pony card game. I think it's fine where it is though. I can definitely see the appeal of these short two player games that are. Yeah, you gotta accessible. play. Yeah. You, we need the games that involve the wife. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, is Patrick <laughs> on here? Let's see. Control no, it's F. like a hundred something. It's not on here. Uh, yeah. Unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Control that patchwork. Uh, Nemesis. Never played it. Never like. Yeah, apparently, we got like two people who have it though. Like one of Jason's friends, like a uh, Jin, is like a Yu-Gi-Oh guy has it. And I, doesn't Steven have it? I don't remember. Yeah, I think he just got it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we we have a lot of options to play. We just haven't yeah, played it yet. We haven't played it yet, but uh, I think I would actually enjoy it. I've heard very conflicting ideas on how good the core design is and how it's very RNG. I mean, if it's like a dumb dead of winter yeah. shit show, I'm all for it. Like, yeah. <laughs> of course, those type of games I play like once in a blue moon, but like, yeah. still, when you do play them and you let, let it like, you know, settle for a bit and play it again, like, yeah. it is so just novel every time, yeah. you know? If we do a review on Nemesis, I feel like the, the recommender score would be kind of like, eh, but my personal would be like higher. That's just like a rough guess. 
I mean, I just, I don't, I, I can't trust what people say, so who knows? Yeah, maybe, like, yeah, maybe it is. Like, turns out recommend score, like, maybe it's, yeah. maybe it's just good, because maybe the game's yeah. really well-designedly yeah. built around being stupid yeah. versus something like that at Winter, where yeah. it's like, oh, no, yeah, this stupid is actually broken. This is broken, yeah. 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 Uh, Castles of Birdie. You, you played a four-player with me, right? I have played this game and don't remember anything okay. about it, so I... I quite like it. My problem is the setup's kind of too annoying for what it is. I gladly play it again. Because the only reason yeah. why I remember this game is because it's just been sitting in your room for in this room for a while. So like I look at it frequently. It's so like okay, yeah. But like yeah. if it was not in this room, I would forget that I played it. Honestly, it'd be like that's not fucking euro. Like, I mean, it's definitely a euro euro. <laughs> like it doesn't do anything too crazy, but it just it feels good for me to play. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it is a little too high here though. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I can't yeah. really judge. I feel like all the euros yeah. I play are like, fuck it. Like I would just <laughs> take like a D100, roll it. All right, it's in this list somewhere. You know, like that's just how I feel about yeah. all the ones in here. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised Converter is not higher than this. If this is like seven, I think it's just because this plays really good two player. Oh, there's yeah. your bias. Uh, 16, Scythe. Uh, great two player game, yeah. Great one player game, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, remember there's like in our Discord, people were saying like his hell overhyped. I mean, yeah. yeah, the game does yeah. like have like a great fucking look to it. It's like Kickstarter was like nuts, right? Yeah. Like this game in general is just like got everything going for how it looks. And it just let down a bunch of people because it's like it says 4X and they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they really double down on that. Also, some of the balance. Yeah, it, it's it's I mean, it's fine, right? Like we're okay, we're okay with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it should be yeah. this high. Though. Like, it it makes sense high, to me yeah. if it was like like 30s, 40s. No, like low top 100s, but like still to be this high is kind of crazy to me because like I guess people just really take to heart just fixing it themselves and be like, all right, we're banning those combinations. Yeah. Get all the Actually, you know, you know what probably is? Rise of Fenrir. Oh, I see. We I haven't see. played it yet, but what it, people yeah. say, apparently it's like literally a different game. Okay. So when people yeah. say Scythe, I don't know what they're talking about. If it's just base mm. game or they're playing with all the crazy shit you throw yeah. in, you know? So it's, it's also funny because... There's a lot of people that just play digital too. Like that makes like sense. Yeah, because you get a game yeah. done in like literally 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. But are those people the people rating on BG? I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe. I don't Maybe. know. I remember yeah. as far as you, I watched a bunch of uh, tournament play. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I was just like, yeah, I learned a lot. And like, they're just usually playing digital. Yeah. I mean, it's way faster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so 70s, 80s, maybe? Or oh, Rise of Fenrir, sorry. Well, yeah, that's yeah. why I can't tell. Because yeah. maybe yeah. if Rise of Fenrir literally is the thing that saves it for those people who are like misled initially, then it yeah. could actually make sense for it to be here. But we haven't played Rise of Fenrir, so I don't fucking know. Does it make it a 4X? All I know is that it like literally adds in rules as you play more and more games. It's oh. like entirely new factions in it are just in like locked like envelopes and shit. Like, okay. It, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's literally a different game. So I, I don't know how to assess that, right? Okay. Uh, 15, Twilight Struggle. I never played it. I played it. I tried to play it a long time ago with our buddy Jason, and it was just so heavy. The iconography was just so hard to keep track of. We were just sitting there and like, oh, I think I think we're we're kind of done on this. And I haven't really done that for many games. But I think maybe now if I approached it, I'd have a little more resilience to that sort of thing. I but, just had done the yeah. page for two player stuff. Yeah. But also I heard it's like better digitally, so I'll probably spend that too. Yeah. yeah, like because if we, yeah. anytime a game gets to a point, I've seen the board. It's just yeah. like you literally just all of these different like locations on the map yeah, yeah. that just have like two sides, like whoever's like playing the blue or red, right? Yeah, uh -huh. like, they're flipping over constantly. It's like yeah. dude, there's so much crap to keep track of. Yeah, like, there's so much stuff. The, yeah, if I want to do that, I would just be playing Yu-Gi-Oh in the current format, where you're playing like 20 cards all in the fucking field at once, and being like, all right, which links to that? Blah blah yeah. blah blah blah. Like, <laughs> yeah. also like this, the, like the art for this, like it's kind of cool for me at first, but it just gets really dry at some point. It's just like so. Drab. It's just all black. Yeah, this is Yu-Gi-Oh. Look at yeah. Weebart. Yeah, exactly. You can look at the pretty colors. Also, they're, they're like literally fucking foil cars. Yeah, shining exactly. Yeah, you can like feel them in your hand. Like they have different textures. Yeah. Uh, Great Rest and Trail. I mean, this I've already talked about Second Edition. I feel like yeah, Second Edition way lower than First Edition. What, what's happening? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure Second Edition is better in every way. So also, why yeah. is this not just why is it not re-implemented? Who the fuck is doing? Why is it for all these random euros? All these Second Editions are not being re-implemented. I mean, it says re-implemented here. Oh. But I don't know why. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, BGG arbitrary. Going. Fuck it. Nerds doing dumb things. Who yeah, cares? I don't. I never played this version, but I don't see why someone would play this over second edition. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but they should be swapped. Let's just say that. Okay, I'll <laughs> take your word for it. Ah, oh, this is a fun one. Why is this one so high? What the thirteen? Dude, people love Dune Imperium. People really like it. I think okay. this game 
it has like the first impression is like amazing. I, and it's uh, Dune, yeah. yeah. And it's Dune, yeah. And it's not too long. It's pretty easy to learn. So, yeah. Because I would definitely yeah. put this one underneath there. I think it's definitely top 100 material for yeah. sure. Just because, like, yeah, I can see why, like, this is something that people would, like, hella like. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But at least, like, top 13, top 12, I'm like, what is happening here? Yeah, I, I, I still quite like it. I think it kind of has, like, from seeing how people responded to the new expansion, I think their approach to Dune Imperium is a lot more casual than the way we're approaching it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we're like, oh, like, this, like, randomness is really whack. But if you're just playing it, like, to just, like, play with the powers and just explore the world, then, yeah, like, Rise of X is not going to be a problem. Yeah, the problem I have that mindset is that it applies to literally every game and it makes it impossible to evaluate anything. It's like, oh, any <laughs> game just be like, a fuck yeah. run, do whatever. It's like, yeah, yeah. Okay, then, <laughs> sure, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. what are we here to talk about with the game, Daniel? You know? Yeah, but uh, I... I'm surprised it's quite, it's this high. Yeah. What, wait, wasn't it top? Uh, I remember seeing okay. a top 20. So it's yeah, gone top 20? up. Okay, okay. So it's gone up actually. Okay. So it was like maybe like 23, 24 last time when we did the review. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, we think this should be below Everdell. Like I'd, yeah, I'd put Everdell above yeah. this. I'd put Everdell above this, but I can see why people are drawn to this. Okay. Through the ages, a new story of civilization. I was going to say it belongs there knowing nothing about it because it just seems really cool. Well, this, <laughs> this, sorry. This is the one I've actually played, not the one before. This yeah. is like the same game. So sure. It's there. <laughs> and the game seems balanced from when I played it. Uh, Gaia Project. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Blonde. I have not played yeah. it. But yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely blonde. No, no, no. It's good though. I tried playing this on BGA, BGA and like, mm. holy moly, it's just so hard to keep track of it. Actually, it does well in person because like all like- Real, How does that make yeah. sense? In what world does doing something digitally make it harder to play than versus in person? I don't know. I think it's the UI. Maybe if I was on Tabletop Simulator, it'd be easier. But on BGA, the U, the way it's okay, implemented, it. yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, like even on yeah. ta- like on Tabletop Simulator, like, dude, this beats in person every single time. Like, what are you kidding me? Like, what? Like, I cannot like just teleport to that side of the table and just click something and look at it, right? Like. GTS, I can just go like mouse, all right, click, done. Like, mm. I yeah. think like in real part of in real life, I gotta be like, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. shuffling and then setting things up, like dealing, you know, like just, mm. God, GTS is so good. What the, f- mm. yeah, guy projects. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes higher, actually, but it has been around for like five years, so I think it's pretty sense then where it is. Mm. Spirit Island, the next one, number 10. Yeah, yeah that's easy, pretty, number yeah, 10. Oh, yeah. belongs there. I'm oh, actually yeah. surprised that isn't higher, too. But I guess it is technically top 10. We are in top 10 level. I mean, yeah, at this point, yeah. <laughs> anything here can kind of just be switched around. Yeah, except yeah. For like, anything in top 10 that isn't Gloomhaven, I'm just like, this all makes sense to be here. You know, I don't really care what number it's in. It's like, whatever, you know? War of the Rings, second edition. Definitely belongs to be here. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Seems crazy how much shit they put in just to make it like it seems like yeah. Lord of the Ring to me at least for the way you describe it is like obviously I still haven't played I haven't played it but it yeah. feels like what like the Dune board game was trying to be in terms of like getting the theme to match with what the fuck's on the oh, game like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, way yeah, better yeah, you know yeah yeah way better yeah I mean it's actually like more balanced but it's a different system as two player or I guess that is easier to balance than yeah. six feet yeah that's for it's sure way easier to balance but at the same time they'll just don't write like really bizarre fucking rules out <laughs> like these weird clauses that like need to be like fleshed out and like some tournament FAQ rules or something, yeah. you know, like what we see Star Wars Rebellion 8, right? And my my kind of problem with War of the Ring is that it's so true to the initial lore that it actually stops me from replaying it. Oh, because like yeah. the strategies are just like, just do what happens in movies and you'll win type of stuff. It's not that. It's just like, because the map is always the same because like it is like the story, then there's certain strategies you want to do and then you follow those and it's cool. But after a while, I'm like, eh, I want a little more variance on my opening board states. Because the Fair opening board is yeah. always I mean, the same. You said with games, a lot of people just play them because they really want to relive something in a different yeah, game, yeah. right? It's like they to make it go off track might make it like less popular. You know what I mean? So like when I was doing research on this thing for the review, I would read a lot of stories about people saying, oh, like it's a tradition for me to play it every year with my brother or I play with my like friend. It's almost at that yeah. point. They're like, basically, you just, it's like you get getting together to watch the movies. Again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think it does a great job at that. But if you play it like routinely, it's just kind of like you need expansions, right? I mean, expansions, a lot of expansions exist. Uh, like a yeah. classic another game yeah. that you're not supposed to play that much or just it has great first impressions, yeah. right? <laughs> but I mean, for what this game is like trying to do, like, dude, it's like the theme and everything. Like you're, you're, you're living the movies. You're living the books. It's Lord of the Rings. It's yeah. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So anyways. Definitely belongs there. Except for learning. Holy moly, dude. This game is so hard to learn. Oh my gosh. I can see it like <laughs> dropping though. Like just because if there's not like a re-implementation. It's like from what you described with the components and learning it. Yeah, it's just like. Yeah. It, there, it yeah. feels like there's, there needs to be another, another edition. Yeah, like, like I, I could see Gaia Project Spirit Island easily overtaking this. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars Rebellion, I think uh, 
does a lot more to give you variance because the rebel base is always in somewhere different. Oh, yeah, just put it in fucking yeah, right next yeah. to the empire if you want to. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> and also, there's like more strats you can play around with because the, the map is a lot less rigid. It's basically just like yeah. really fucked up battleship, from what I understand. Kind of, yeah, but it has like a cool or asymmetric battleship because yeah. one guy is actually not playing battleship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the way the way it does like Euro is uh, the worker placement is really cool because uh, it ties it with your hand and then like you're mind gaming your opponent to where where each leader is going to go on each planet and counter each other's workers. Yeah, sick mm -hmm. game. Like even as the rebellion, like once I was playing a game with their friend, that Bernard. like the whole leader thing already also sounds like another like yeah they did the Dune board game mechanic better. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was playing a game with Pranav and then uh, he was trying to posture a bit more aggressive. So what I did as a first turn as Rebels, I just all in with all my forces to kill it like half his fleet and it worked. <laughs> and he was like, oh shit. I, I could not do that in uh, War of the Ring. You couldn't make like such gutsy plays like that. Yeah. Too, uh, too lore accurate. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like you can't have like just ships like teleporting and stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Draws a line, number seven. I feel like I can see this like just staying in top 10 like forever, but I don't know if it's ever gonna go up to where Gloomhaven is, you know? Oh uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it might. Maybe Gloomhaven just drops down because Frosthaven's out, so who knows? I mean, what do you think about, uh, like, yeah, like, Frosthaven, like, is that going to, like, be one and then Gloomhaven's going to I don't think so, no. Okay. Because, like, the thing is, uh, for a lot of, like, newcomers coming into it, right, like, the Gloomhaven magic, right, like, uh. from the hype from the first Kickstarter, right, and overtaking all this shit, uh, I mean, it's just been a while now, so it's going to dissipate, right? Like, Frosthaven's obviously good, right? It's like, I said, it's amazing. It's fucking, holy <laughs> shit, it's a good game. But, like, yeah, I see this hitting like top ten also, but like just again number one. I don't I don't know if it's gonna like imitate that like the fucking zealotry that was for like Gloomhaven, you know? Like that type of shit I think is gonna happen to something like Oathsworn. Like because Frost is a sequel, you know? It's like it's already kind of established, it's nowhere near as novel. Like, sure, the Gloomhaven insane zealotry that was there from like its like first not first printing, second printing, right? But but because it was the first thing, it was like amazingly novel, right? Everything about it was fresh and new, whereas the Frosthaven, like if you're like a guy who's like a Gloomhaven vet, there's a lot of still some tried and true tendencies. You're gonna be like, okay, cool. Like what's really novel about it is instead like all oh, the outpost face though, which is like very good, don't get me wrong, but that's not near, no near as magical as the, the first time you fall in love with uh, Gloomhaven. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So okay. like this is just, Frosty is just Gloomhaven, but like everything is just better, you know? But it's not anything new. It's why I'm saying like, I don't think it'll hit top number one actually. Top 10 probably? Top 10 for sure. Oh yeah, okay, easily. Right. I, I think like Jaws, Lion, and Frosthaven are just gonna just like constantly just be around number ten, and, and like Gloomhaven will eventually fall as the years goes down. I feel like because like there's no way it stays number one for like more than like ten years. I'm gonna say that's my bet. Okay, yeah, I mean it's already been on since 2016 or 20. Yeah, so we're, it's been yeah. here for yeah like six years. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. If I had to put money on which like Haven game gets number one, it'd probably be Jaws, not Frosthaven. Oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like Frosthaven is still like. Just like, I don't know, just like, so, 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 so too, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Like, it's not fresh enough. Especially after, like, because I think if this game came out last year, it would be number one, you know? Mm. But, like, too many delays means the hype kind of got curtailed a bit, you know what I mean? Hmm. Okay. Like, it kind of missed that, like, that wave. Because now there's Oath Sworn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is based on literally all conjecture. This is based on nothing. I have not seen statistics. So if I'm proven wrong, because it turns out, Frost saving like people buy it and like it actually draws in newcomers, then I'm gonna be entirely wrong. Cause that's totally possible because this game, like here's the thing. If you're getting into the Haven games, like obviously recommend Jaws of Line, right? But if someone really wanted to, I'd be like, yeah, you can just pick up Frost Haven and start playing it. Like I would not say for Gloomhaven, but for Frost Haven, this is 100 percent a game you can just buy and just start playing. Like, I kid you not, they they fixed that about it versus Gloomhaven, which is fucking incredible. Like, how did you do that, Sepulfer? Like this game is it's so big. It's so stupid. But it has a working inserts, a fucking tutorial, and like a really good rule book. So like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they learned from Jaws of the Lion. Yeah. Yeah. And it's MSRP is $250, which wow. that's a tough sell. Yeah, Gloomhaven that, is literally only yeah. hundred, right? Yeah, so like, nice. yeah. yeah. <laughs> like even at 50% off, that's that's quite a bit. That's why yeah. I'm saying like, yeah, I can see it being top 10, but like number one, I'm just, I'm not sure about it. You know, you know, I think it deserves to be there. But I just don't see, you know, people putting it up there. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I think... As of right now, Frosthaven, if this list is up to me, that's the number one game of all time. Like just straight up, all right? Like, they, this is the board game of all time. <laughs> okay, wow. Big hype for review, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I, this is, yeah. I'm just going to straight up, this is easy nine, maybe 10 on 10. Like, just straight up. Like, I'm just telling you that right Because it's already just Gloomhaven, which had amazing combat, and they fixed, like, pretty much all the bullshit, which is like, mm. 
Yeah, that's yeah. just give me a high score then. <laughs> okay, uh, Terraforming Mars. You never played it. I never no, played yeah, it. I dodged it every time. <laughs> fucking somehow. Ti four. This one always surprises me. Why the fuck is this one so high? Like I know, like it probably deserves to be here, but it's like I'm surprised that people get together to play it and are able to do so, knowing fucking BGT people. You know what I mean? Well, people who love it really love it, right? Like they like follow a lot of stuff. They like, paint all the minis. They do it once a year. I mean, <laughs> I guess this game's been around enough, so you could play. Once or twice. Like, it's a game yeah. that to me, like, makes no sense as this high. Even though I'm like, yeah, obviously it deserves to be this high. But like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. how though? Well, also it appeals to a lot of different things because you don't have to be that negotiation savvy to play this game and enjoy it. Well, because yeah. okay, here's the two main things I get to yeah. do. Like, one, it's a 6P game yes. that takes a lot of time. Which but to you, me, like, that seems the antithesis of BGD people. But right? you, it, you could play at 3 and still have a really good time. I guess it's three. not broken at 3, yeah. And then number two... Like the game is like such an honestly political RNG shit show. Like the fact yeah, that yeah, it does yeah. have Euro elements, yeah. right? That's for sure. Yeah. But like, it just seems like that's the total antithesis of what a lot of like these BG people yeah. like just want with the Euro games, right? It's like, yeah. cause like people like really just like, oh, this is super complicated, <laughs> super heavy game. Like fucking, the game's crazy. It's so like indefinite. Like when I play it, I'm like, dude, this game is a fucking fiesta. Like you just, you throw dice at the dumbest shit, you get random objectives. Like, how is this like a super complicated in-diff game? And also when you play it, your turns are so easy. You yeah. just, oh, <laughs> triangle there, produce, triangle there, move, attack. And then I use my fucking, like one of the one through eight, those tiles. Yeah, like, yeah. That's it. It's fucking brain dead. Like, I'm sorry. This game is like not that hard to play. Like I would yeah. like to play it. Well, obviously that can get crazy, but at least, at least just, at least just playing the game. Like it's really easy to grasp what the fuck is going on. Yes. Like this game is, so accessible it's not even funny like we have played it with like complete casuals people who are nude board games like all the time like it just works like what <laughs> i mean why like, does it have this aura of yeah. like big super heavy this is the holy grail this is the grand big fucking game you play it's like it the game is not that i i could play this game with a bunch of fucking middle scores i thought it'd be great <laughs> like what yeah i mean it, it is still long you have to give it that. And there are yep. a lot of components, but it doesn't mean it's complex. It's not like... Maybe my brain's just rotted yeah. from Gloomhaven because like, yeah. at this point, like no board game is just that complicated as a component to me because yeah. like, I'm just like... Maybe, yeah. I've maybe. organized these yeah. behemoths now. I mean, like, yeah. maybe our brains are just broken from like Gaia Project and like Gloomhaven. <laughs> yeah. What, what's another crazy one? Like, uh... I'd even argue fucking Tain and Grail or like Old Sworn. Right? Yeah. Actually, I haven't played Old Sworn, but I've seen the boxes, so it's mm. just like... Yeah, but uh, I mean, this game has, I think it has like pretty much everything for everyone. There's factions you can play if you want. Turtle, there's literally a turtle faction. Like there yeah. is a turtle as the art. Or if you just want to like camp and tech up, then you could Joel Nara. You don't have the diplomacy even that well. You can just play the game and still enjoy it. Like this, yeah, yeah. this is a game that 100% yeah. deserves to be up here, but I'm just, I am so surprised. That, yeah, like, yeah, it's like, okay, compare this. Twilight Imperium, four. Fourth edition, like number five. Terraforming Mars, six. Ark Nova 4. It's like sur it's surrounded by a bunch of Euros. Yeah. Obviously, these, they're, they're these, which are the confrontational two player games, right? It's, yep. it's a little different. But everything else around it is more Euro y, less confrontational, less negotiation heavy, right? Yeah. I think the more negotiation stuff, negotiation stuff is like starting at 20. 25? Not, Eclipse? <laughs> I mean, is that not, that's not yeah. even real. Like, maybe, not I really, guess like Rue. Yeah. I mean, also Rue, not even. You don't have to do diplomacy in Rue that I much. I think Rue is pretty important for diplomacy. But yeah, Eclipse definitely don't need it. <laughs> so it depends on what faction you're playing. In Rue, like if you're playing like a guy who like is like really weak in certain areas and yeah, obviously you want to convince people to not attack those areas. But if you're playing something like the fucking, I don't know, Vagabond or some like random insurgency faction, like you can position mm -hmm. yourself pretty well to just like avoid a lot of potential like pitfalls, you know? So what's the next one? Like, uh, would it be Pax Premier? Probably that, yeah. Probably? Okay, yeah, so 41, yeah. yeah again, that's why I'm saying, like, because yeah. to me, Champion Force should be number two, like, obviously, but, like, the fact that it even is up here, I'm like, I'm so proud of BG. Like, you guys got it right for once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, the people that like it just really, really, really like it. It's like Gloomhaven. Yeah, but it's like Gloomhaven, you have, like, the, you have the similarities of it being Euro-y, right? Or, like, cooperative or single-player, two-player. It's not even just, yeah. like, yeah, there's, there's yeah. definitely the dire Gloomhaven fans that the subreddit's anything to go off of, but, like, yeah. It's also still, again, a lot of people just play and just because just, just you can be like, I'm going to just jump in for yeah, some yeah. stars and just do yeah. whatever, right? Yeah, tier four, you can't just jump in and play, but someone can just teach you like this and then you can just play it and enjoy it. Yep. Yeah. As you're saying, like all our casual friends, just like, wow, this is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like we had, a, we had a buddy back in high school who we played TI3 with and he wasn't like that big into board games, but he started playing. He's like, oh my God, I love the Barony so much. He, he like sat down after the game and he typed up an entire PDF on what to do the next game. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy, right? <laughs>
telling you, the game's not yeah. hard to play. Yeah, the game is uh, pretty intuitive. Yeah, and also like 17 factions in the base box. Like, ooh, 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 that's crazy. Yeah. I just wish there were more. I, I, I wish the game had like 10 factions, but they're all way more asymmetric, but that's uh, not my taste, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, you got you to get... I think the game just caters to everyone so well. Like the only thing it has against it is that it's long and like it takes yeah. up a lot of space. You know, yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, this is the Holy Grail. I wish I could ever play this. Oh, I don't have any friends. It's like, you know, right. like, so I, again, I'm so surprised that it is up here, but like, I'm so surprised it is up here, yeah. but I'm so happy it is. Well, you can't, <laughs> you can't play a solo. <laughs> Uh, number four, Ark Nova. Yeah, please don't ever leave yeah. that top five. If it goes to six, I'm gonna be mad. He's yeah. the same top five forever. Yeah, it needs to be number two, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I think it should be number two. <laughs> like, Friday, but this should be. It's like Friday number one, number one, TI four, number two. I don't know what the fuck's number three. Like, <laughs> mm, I don't know. Star Wars Rebellion. <laughs> that's pretty good one. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good one. Uh, Ark Nova never played it. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck did it get up. Yeah, this game shoot up. Yeah, this came out of fucking nowhere. What the? Yeah, who's who's yeah. bot farming this? What's happening? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, like I looked at it. The game seems. Fine. I mean, maybe I didn't do enough research. But before we play, I'm like, wait, this is fucking yeah, amazing. Wait, what maybe. the fuck? This game needs to be number one right now. <laughs> it's all expensive. Fuck Ross Damon. Get him to Ark Nova. Get in there. Uh, yes, I never played that. Oh, dude, these elephant minis are sick, bro. Oh, shit. Pandemic Legacy Season 1, it's it kind of bothering me how this is so high. <laughs> I, I feel like yeah. it makes sense if it's like top like 20. Yeah, but top like, 20. Yeah, I don't know fine. why the fuck it's been yeah. number one for a while and then like down here. But I guess, I guess it was like the first like big legacy game they got everyone yeah, booked, right? Still like but now Gloomy is still in that spot. So, so it's like, just writing off like the, the hype, I guess, still. Yeah, because like there's yeah. so many early 10 ratings that are just yeah. there now, right? And yeah. it has 48,000 ratings, which is going to keep it there for a while, you know? Wow. Okay, uh, two, Brass Birmingham. Yep, I think it belongs here, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's a top 10 game. I don't, yeah. I don't know about top five, but top 10 yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the game, I think... Especially after what I've heard about Lancashire, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's because Birmingham is more accessible, right? It's more so accessible, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's cut through. Yeah, I, I, I'm Super actually... Super well-designed, I would say, yeah. I'm a little surprised on the ranking because of, like, A, it's, like, three hours, but B, because the rule book just tilted me as... Dude, ah, people don't give a fuck about rule books. Yeah. They just care about whether mechanics are good. That's the mechanics it. Like, are freaking awesome, yeah. It's like, okay, remember, all right, when it comes to board games, theme, aesthetics, rule book, <laughs> organization... None of that shit fucking matters. All mechanics. <laughs> Everything else you do yourself, okay? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we like, look at Gloomhaven. What yeah. the fuck? Gloomhaven, number one. You literally yeah. need a storage <laughs> solution. You cannot just, like, play this game. You have to, like, buy it. Yeah. Knowing, all oh, right, I need a bunch of fucking plastic bags or, like, plain all those custom inserts or something. You know, you just... This game literally just... <laughs> You put it down, self is like, yeah, fuck, you figured it out. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. okay, whoa, I love it. Oh, I my Gloomhaven box never looks the same as anyone else's Gloomhaven box, right? It's just custom shit in it everywhere, right? Like, I organized it in my way, you did it in yours. Like, we, it's like we all built PCs together, you know? It's like, yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah. there's like things yeah. we understand about shared yeah. parts, but we all do it a little differently, you know? Yeah, you kind of, it's like the underdog story, right? It's like, wow, Gloomhaven, I, I can do, I can deal with the Jane because it's like a, this is a small company. <laughs> Which is, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. that's what happened, yeah. Yeah. And everyone was like, wait, the comic's fucking amazing. Whoa, and they just shot up and it was like, okay, man, there you go. And then uh, second printing comes out, it's like, oh, everyone's like, oh, I gotta get on this. It's yeah. fucking, it's a better next pandemic legacy. And it's a dungeon crawler. Whoa, shit. And there's no <laughs> dice. There's no fucking there's no di- dice. Uh, <laughs> no dice. Fucking, I hate the crits and misses sometimes. I mean, I love them because they're, <laughs> they're stupid, but the game is so tight that if you ever get into a scenario where it's like, you get really unlucky or really lucky, like, this time it just gets broken because it's like, oh, I just cheesed it, but I just killed everything in one hit or they killed me in one hit. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> okay, let's wrap this up. Any final thoughts on BG Top 100? I'm going to start with, yeah, there are a lot of euros here. Almost, what, uh, 60% euro? 70% euro? Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. that's my die actually made it up here. Like, what the yeah, fuck? That, game's, that yeah. game's the most Ameritrash. trash. Like, yeah. I roll 20 dice and which let me roll 20 more dice and this die when it gets rolled, lets me roll another dice, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's also no party games, right? <clears throat> I don't think oh, there's yeah. any party games up here. The closest thing was like the crypto and that's like 100 like one something. Five, yeah. One five, yeah. Get the crypto higher, you fucks. Yeah, yeah the crypto I think belongs. And put code names lower. Yeah, put code names way lower. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that game. <laughs> Yeah, shelf side plays and just bash on code names. Yeah. <laughs> Any other thoughts? I mean, I think a lot of these games are relatively low conflict in the ones that are more multiplayer oriented. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's why again, TI Farm. Like, what the yeah, fuck? yeah what, what is it doing yeah. there? It but, feels it but, feels like it snuck in, you know. But again, that is a game that <laughs> doesn't can play. Yeah, it doesn't really promote going out and destroying someone. But I think it's really smart design because of the way the objectives are dealt out. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, great game, man. Let's play it right now. Uh, yeah, I say that and we just don't. Yeah, we just don't. <laughs>
Uh, we have kind of uh, stopped yeah. our tradition of playing it like once every few months, you know. Any any other thoughts on these games? Nemesis, I'm also surprised it's so high. Again, I think Nemesis... And Tainted yeah. Grail, but I mean... I, I, actually, I'm not really surprised. Yeah. I explained why it kind of got there, but I mean, yeah. This is 18. <laughs> That's insane. This is higher than Root. It's clearly a good game. I don't know. <laughs> it's higher than... Or I don't know, RPG yeah. people stupid who fucking knows. I don't know what's happening anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm just... Very curious as to where Frost is going to end up. I'm just, I just want to know now, you know. I do wish there were more party games on the top hundred, but I totally that too. Yeah, I, I, totally I got, I got shit, I but. understand. I get it. Anyways, uh, that's it for the video. I, I got to head out, but uh, yeah, I'll cut everything. This is uh, the ranking in the top hundred, and probably won't do this next year because I feel like the list won't change too much. But maybe the year after that. Yeah, it could. I mean, if Frost even gets number one, I want to talk about it. Oh, so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, do it. Yeah. Vote ten on Frost, David. <laughs> I don't care if you haven't played the game. Be those guys who are inflating the score and fuck everyone's giving it once. All right. Those people, those people are ruining what should be a good game. I know they're trying to balance out the score, but it's just fucking amazing. Please, please just play the game, man. It's, it's $250. It's so worth it, bro. Just please, bro. Please hit the drop.